Hit it, Travis. What's going on, you guys? It's Dog Cost Crypto here with Funny Jim, man. What's up, man? Woohoo! I'm here in the live studio. I'm excited about tonight's uh, program. We're going to have a lot of topics to discuss. Hell yeah, man. I was looking forward to getting with the, uh, my main hopium dealer. There we go. Dollar Cost Crypto. <laughs> Heck, Jesus. Funding Jim right here, man. I mean, like, I'm impressed by you. I mean, I call you the living Rolodex. <laughs> it's crazy. You guys do not know, like, what kind of connector... You know, fun Jim is right here, man. I mean, it's it's Gary just walks to a crowd of people and by and he walks out with their phone numbers and everything. <laughs> and photos. And photos. You know, like yeah, a, yeah. It's, it's always like a selfie with them. And I say, let me put your contact in my phone. And then probably within a, a day or two, I found who they're looking for. Mm. Like if they're looking for a code developer, if they're looking for seed money or funding or something like that, if they're looking for network, you know, I, I really enjoy that part of, uh, right. of this role. I mean, do you naturally already always like that? Because I mean, you are you you are like a problem solver when it comes to the social sense. Like that's what you do, like really well. I, I wouldn't say I was a natural. You know, there's always this nature versus uh, nurture mm. thing. You know, like uh, are you born in a certain way and certain way that your brain works, or is it a result of like uh, your experiences or your your, uh, your life as a child? So I, I think that I learned how to adapt uh, because I changed schools quite a bit as a kid. And I had a lot of uh, transient relatives, so to speak, and stepmothers and stepfathers and, uh, oh, you know, shit. stepbrothers yeah. and stepsisters. So I, I learned how to adapt fairly early uh, and like figure out a person's personality early on. And then uh, my survival skill, I guess, was uh, networking. Got it. Got it. I mean, I mean, I don't know if you want to give everyone your background and stuff like that. I mean, you have a really crazy background, man. You're like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm older, so I've got more chapters than other people that I right. associate with in this crypto game. You know, I'm talking to a lot of 23 to 28 year olds mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, they, they feel like they've got a good uh, uh, handle on what the world is. But, you know, I also say, yeah, I used to walk uphill and uh, no shoes in the snow, both directions, you know, the, all these kind of like uh, old fogey kind of stories, right, too. Right. Like, I remember when there wasn't an Internet. They're like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> in the future, it's like, I remember when there wasn't Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so like the origin things, I, th I think of myself as um, because of this adaptability and this also endless curiosity that I have about, uh, you know, living a, an interesting life. I, I think of a biography as uh, necessary to have chapters that are different from each other. Right. So when I was a kid, it was agriculture, farming, cattle, northeast Texas. That was my life. 
And then as a uh, late teen into my early 20s, it was uh, special forces, military medic, yeah. uh, deploying all over the world with a, with a reconnaissance unit. And then uh, 22 years old, I got picked up for a school that I applied for in the Navy that was uh, specializing me for cardiology. Anything mm. to do with the MRI, CT, echocardiography, cath lab, heart transplant, any technology to diagnose or therapy kinds of technologies. That was my expertise for 20 years. Um, and then I was bored of medicine and I moved into real estate and was interested in real estate for many years before blockchain and crypto right. entered my life. So I think I'm kind of five people's worth of life experience compressed into one guy. Yeah, most people would have just been the medic and that would have been enough for their whole life. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like, oh, I was a football star, and what else? Like nothing else. Like they just continued their factory job, right. or oh, I, you know, I was, uh, you know, some specialist in one particular career field for a whole arc of thirty or forty years, yeah. and then they retired. Like I think, I, I think my superpower is being able to relate to people from many different walks and different right. career backgrounds because I've lived at least some part of my life as that chapter. Right. I mean, I just can't even imagine your life if you stayed in Texas. We just been in a, a cattle baron. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't a cattle baron at all. My, my family didn't have any resources really by, by far, but we did have, uh, my grandparents uh, operated a, a, a dairy farm mm. and it maybe had like 80 cattle head. Um, and uh, during the, it was funny, my, I would go to visit my grandparents for the summer and stay, you know, summers with them. They lived about a hundred miles from where my mother and I lived and uh, go to visit for the summers and have the farm thing for sure. And my grandmother and grandfather, um, they would wake up at four in the morning so that they could milk the cows by five o'clock. Right. And then my mother would come, you know, I mean, my grandmother would come take a shower from that work uh, and put on her fancy bank clothes and go work at a community bank from, uh, you know, 9 a.m. until about 3 p.m. Oh, okay. And she would come home to milk the second session because they, they get milked twice a day. So yeah, so my grandparents were great examples of work ethic and uh, actually diversification. They're like, let's do this bank thing during the yeah. day and let's do this cattle, uh, you know, milk uh, business. Uh. Right, because the bank thing paid all year, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I love the examples of people that have a lot of different um, skill sets underneath their belt. And my right. grandparents are good examples of that. I mean, that's awesome too. I mean, I used to help my grandparents around the, uh, around the ranch and we had a ranch in Mexico. We used to have cattle, we used to have pigs and I mean, like literally all the animals you could think of. But you know, now it's just, you know, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still there, but it's just like, we, like my grandfather couldn't take care of the animals anymore. And then we didn't have any, anybody, any family in Mexico. So we had to sell off all the, you know, all the cattle and stuff. That would have happened for my family the same way. My great grandmother and grandfather ran the dairy first and it was their property. And then when my great grandmother's uh, was getting more feeble and she was in her sixties yeah. and still milking cows, like, you know, still yeah. doing the work as a single, uh, she was a widow. So she was, a, oh, okay. she was able to uh, continue for a few years, but then uh, it was becoming too daunting and her daughter and my, which is my grandmother and my grandfather took over. So yeah, so the family farm, you know, meme, that's the truth. Um, and no longer is that the case. I think they leased it out and they've moved on into the retirement years and doing other things. Yeah, I mean, this part of our lives, we're just milking Cambodian breast milk at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all, you know, no, this is the bullshit that, that I yeah. do not like. And I get really technical about my like la choice of words and language and how people text something or they use a particular vocabulary. I get a little bit annoyed. I'm a little bit irritable about that way. Sure, sure. So I hear this thing about uh, almond milk and I'm like, where are they squeezing right. the titties? I don't see no titties on the... On the <laughs> on the almond or you know all these different phrases that they right. try to they try to throw you know and and have me accept like they'll tell me uh you know it's an impossible burger i'm like there's no burger man it's yeah. it's vegetable no no I'm, I'm with you on the impossible burger crap that's <laughs> no no wrong do not eat that crap that's you want breasticles that, that's that's what you eat man. you want soy in your diet soy i mean uh, almond milk i, I feel weird I, I think if it's done like like in small batches, I think it's okay, but I but industrial soy milk. I mean, I, well, soy milk. Don't drink soy milk. But industrial like almond milk is, I think, pretty bad. I mean, it's just, it looks like gray milk. I, yeah, there, I mean, there's an economic model behind why it's promoted yeah. and uh, why it's so popular in California where so many of the almond trees are located and, right. you know, the scarce resource of water. And there's that whole controversy about who gets 
like I think it's Kern Farms, right? Yeah. That has all the access to the waters and such. So, I mean, it's it's a strange thing. And again, maybe it's because it directly competes with the uh, milking uh, business or the right. milk industry. But I don't know. It's not milk if it didn't come from a titty. A titty. <laughs> Did it come from a titty? From the mammaries. Sorry, sir. <laughs> mammaries. <laughs> But shout out a uh, crypto bull, uh, you know, crypto uh, winter bull with ten dollars super chat. Hey DCZ, I hate to bring up Zen again. Here we go. Oh no! Uh, here, no. here we go! Here, we here go. comes the flood. <laughs> um, but I think uh, it will go down as one of the greatest viruses to live on Ethereum. It does one thing well and one thing only: burn <laughs> Ethereum gas like a mofo. Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, it, I mean, if if it does one thing good, I mean, it's definitely that. But it 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 does increase the cost on Ethereum, but also. I mean, but at the same time with VIP 1559, and now that we have, you know, Ethereum 2.0, the beginning stages of with the merge happening, I mean, all these transactions do help, you know, burn off Ethereum, which makes it scarcer, so it can increase the price over time. But it's not going to do a dramatic effect and stuff like that, because it's going to start off hot right now, and then every, like, the the, the gas fee it's, it's going to, like, increase is really only going to be on the, the subsequent chains that they go onto, and then once people kind of, like, rape those other chains and bring money back to ethereum and stuff and then take the money out of the system um i mean there's gonna be continual wallets being created and stuff like that i mean it's just gonna i don't know man this is well I've, I've heard different things and i yeah. i'm not as uh schooled as you are about ethereum uh being inflationary versus deflationary is it slowing down the rate of inflation or is it actually decreasing the total supply so it's creating so many trends. So every transaction that happens on Ethereum, a certain portion of it's burned. Mm -hmm. So by doing so many transactions, like even if it's three dollar transactions, like twenty five cents of it, fifteen mm -hmm. cents of it's getting burned away. So it's making Ethereum scarcer, but at the same time too, it's also increasing the cost for the average user on Ethereum. Right now, because we're in a bear market, it's not that bad. But later on in the in the cycle, ugh, it's going to start costing. But at the same time too, it's going to make it actually. It's going to. Uh, it also actually a bull market can I, I think it actually slowed Zen down a little bit as well because if the costs go up a lot, I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's I, not I, zero I, anymore for the wallets anymore. I, really. I, I I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to play out. I'm definitely no expert in the space. I have yeah. been uh, having my blinders on, so to speak, for many years as far as the the hex products yeah. and Richard Hart narratives and things like that. So I. I tend to have thought through these things. And when Zen first came out, uh, as far as a potential product six or seven weeks ago is the first time I heard about it. Uh, I just, I, I wish that more um, uh, modeling had been done about what was right. going to happen. Like yeah. what, what was- maybe, the, maybe it was the model. The actual, well, again, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 there's a little conspiracy yeah. theory in me. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but uh, I, who I, knows? I will remind you, sir. My first ever podcast was the Crypto Gamble podcast, where I the talk about uh, because crypto's a gamble, and I'm here to talk about conspiracy theory. <laughs> Literally, that was my description in my yeah. my podcast. My original podcast name was was a uh, the Crypto Gamble. Yeah, there's so many of those things in the origin of uh, was it Satoshi Dice and other yeah. things, right? So there, mm -hmm. you know, this and, and even inside of the Bitcoin uh, code, having a poker game or something, poker client. Yeah, or something it, it, it had the ability to have poker on it. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, originally, originally, and we're, yeah. we're we're shooting from Las Vegas. I mean, this is a gambling capital of uh, United States, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I know it's cool. Do I, Vegas is sick, man. I like Vegas, man. <laughs> You've converted. You've gone I, full DJ. I've gone full DJ. Like, this is it. Yeah, I play a lot of dice. <laughs> Yo, sh shout out to Black Crypto. And stuff like that. I always play with the hexagons. Every time the hexagons are in town, we go play dice. Like we, we click. Is it a back clack. alley? I mean, do you have like a piece of cardboard or something? You're bouncing off a concrete wall. No, sir. Doing? High limit. High limit room. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we go with the hexagons. No, but half the time, I mean, especially if they don't know how to play. I mean, we just go play a normal table. Yeah. You know, like ten dollar limit and so on the bets or something like yeah. that. If you could find a five dollar one, but I think you can find that maybe at the Golden Nugget or um, maybe one of the um, like the Fremont casinos, maybe. Still, okay. But like, but most most the cheapest tables you're gonna find in Vegas is gonna be like fifteen dollar tables. Yeah. And then the average table is twenty five dollars. Yeah. So it's like if you, I know I'm getting into gambling, <laughs> but like, but I mean, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's an interesting game just to learn basically like um, money management in terms of bankroll and stuff. But I mean, if you get a bunch of shitty rollers, I mean, you're out. Same thing. Like you pick a bunch of losers, you're, you're done, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I know that the topic today is going to be about networking and yeah. this kind of influence game. I think uh, I want to edify you quite a bit. Uh, we've known each other maybe coming up on four years. I yeah. don't know when we first, uh, you know, saw our avatars or something like that on Telegram. I think it was early 2019. Yeah, it was like beginnings yeah. of uh, 2019. Yeah. Uh, and uh, back then, I, I, like the crypto game, I think I had gotten so upset in 2017 into 18. Right. Uh, I probably broke some computers and, uh, you know, threw things in the trash. <laughs> and I was like, screw that crypto yeah, stuff yeah, or whatever, yeah. right? But like your personality... 
uh, along with others that uh, from that era, you know, were um, charismatic and interesting. And I felt like you're an expert in the space oh, thank of you. crypto, even back in the beginnings of 19 when I first came across your content. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, when we talk about like the networking, the network effect, the, you know, the critical mass of a community growth or an idea, you know, expanding and things like that, like crypto as an example today, uh, I think you're one of those, those catalysts. I think he's one of those people that really have a sense of the culture and then you have a great relatable personality. Like you like, you don't feel, don't feel like I'm around bad Jesus, energy. All the flowers you know? this guy's throwing on me right but now. But <laughs> I don't feel like I'm around bad energy. Like I feel yeah. like you're an expert in the space and you know quite a bit. And then also, you know, on the other like human side of it is, you know, if, if people are going to, DGEN's going to DGEN, right? right? People, people have the right to raise themselves up and they have the right to financially destroy themselves too. I think right. they have those rights. Yeah. As long as they have information at their fingertips, if they choose to accept it, then great. If they choose to ignore it, then great. You know, I, I'm all about the person as an individual, but uh, having choice and, 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 and living by that choice. But I feel like your heart's in the right place. I feel like you care about you know, your audience and yeah. your, your, uh, your consumers of your content and knowledge. So. I really like associating around you. Oh, thank you so much, man. I mean, the, I mean, the reason I started the channel was, um, I mean, one out of loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really didn't have anyone to talk to about, about crypto at yeah. all, like n not at all. But um, it was just kind of like, I mean, it took it took a long time to get that proficient. Even in 2019, I don't think I was that. I mean, I was proficient, but I wasn't like on a level where I could like confidently teach it possibly. And then I just kept like learning. And then this is why it's. I mean, we didn't we even start the crypto mindset courses until like what September of 2020. So, and that's after like how many months of Hex being launched? Quite yeah. a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, quite a lot. I mean, I think we're like eight months into Hex at the time. But um, no, it's just I got, I, got a little, I got a little sick and tired of what was basically going on in the space and stuff because it was just people getting grifted and like scammed. And then on top of that, no one was onboarding on top of that. So it's like, no one, like, I mean, if you ever onboarded a person, you know. <laughs> How much of a, like how much of a time waste? I mean, not a time. Okay, it's I mean, not a time waste. It's it not, is consuming your your energy. Your energy, yeah, yeah significantly. Sure. So I was like, all right, how can I do this at scale? And you know, something Gary Vee always talks about is like scaling the unscalable, mm -hmm. right? Like teaching a single person about how to do how to uh, how to get into crypto is like. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> in terms of how much time. And then, and then once you teach them to be somewhat proficient, then they're just peppering you with questions. All, I mean, your text messages, as soon as some guy's like, yo, 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 you see what the theorems do? What do you think I should go? And then it's just like ding, 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 ding on your phone all day. And I mean, th yeah. that's what happens. So it's like, well, we got to figure out a way to help, like help, help a bunch of people get into the space and stuff. Cause we need, cause like the, the number one thing that I was seeing everyone doing was like, everybody was trying to uh, onboard other crypto people. Mm -hmm. Now this is not, this is mean, but this is a red pill truth. Most crypto people are worthless. <laughs> Most don't have the capital cause they're already invested in what yeah. they already care about. Right to actually My, you know, mind, diversify. Mindset wise. The mindset. Mindset yeah. wise. Now I'm not talking about it's like human beings. Yeah. Like, oh, All you crypto yeah, people yeah. are horrible, terrible people. But I've been saying yeah. this for, for years. And again, I think that the, the value of the products that I care about and I espouse and talk about all the time, uh, they're not going to grow in value if we don't 10 X or hundred X the, the participants. And like, like you just commented, um, existing communities, existing other product uh, holders, or project holders are difficult. They're difficult. The good thing is maybe they already have uh, this um, this browser application. I don't know if I can say it without making bots attack us. If I say the word MM, something mask, oh, will, oh, will, it, will right. it make the bots attack your stream? Will they come raging through the oh, door no, I, like they do I on Twitter? I got admins in here, man. They'll, 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 they'll shoot them down. <laughs> so, you know, is it, you know, a lot of people like to approach the crypto um, audience right. and, and say they're going to be easy to onboard because they already understand Bitcoin. They already understand Ethereum. They already have MetaMask. They're already, you know, they, they know what Coinbase is or a way yeah. to on-ramp their dollars. Let's go to those guys. I have to tell you, in the several years of me basically evangelizing uh, crypto, they're difficult. Like yeah. they're more challenging than easy. And it is because maybe the circle that it's I... It's a chick that doesn't want to sleep with you. It's, the, it's also the audience that I end up speaking with. They tend to be real estate related people. Right. They tend to have a two to five year uh, time horizon, uh, time horizon yeah. in their current investments. They think about cap rates of, you know, 7% as yeah. uh, killing it in the market, right? Or something along those lines. 
right? <laughs> yeah, and I know, I know it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah like, yeah, oh my God, did you see what I did last year? I made 10% on my money, like cash on cash. Sheesh. I'm like, woo, baller, <laughs> you know? And I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying that that's the conventional legacy market and right. that's the very stable by comparison marketplace of real estate. So when it comes to uh, approaching these people, um, you know, usually they have more capital available to them that they can pull out in equity form right. or whatever from their current holdings. And then they'll speculate. Yeah. And, you know, throwing a hundred grand at something isn't that big of a deal by comparison right. to chasing someone to put a hundred bucks in on a different crypto product, you right. know? Right. So, I mean, this is what I love about Gary. Me and Gary can say the same thing in two different ways, mm. right? Because we, I, mean, I use a lot more words. Yeah, I use a lot more I words. I use volume. I just like flood people with volume of right. words. And then I was like, <laughs> those people dumb, these people better. <laughs> Grunt, 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 grunt. But no, no. But this is something that I've learned that I've learned over time is like you, you people like people like archetypes, mm -hmm. right? So obviously, right? You like you can get famous for being like you're the guy in the space, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter race, creed, gender, nothing like that. But like people sometimes like to see someone that looks like them, mm -hmm. sounds like them. So it's like, like I, I know I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea, mm -hmm. and neither are you mm -hmm. with everybody. But we're important mm -hmm. because you, you, this is how you onboard everybody. Like it, you, it, it isn't just like one like one type of person that can onboard everybody, but uh, but yeah, typically crypto people like they think they're smarter than anybody else and stuff. They think they uh, you know think their shit don't smell, uh, that their coin is the best coin in the world. And it, you, I mean, but that's just because more or less what ends up happening is, uh, the, I mean, the average crypto user eventually after like a year or so, they're they've kind of ridden the cock carousel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to Roll It's true. <laughs> it's true. They're like, I've been through that rigor. I've been through that rigor. You know, I've got the walk of shame about that coin. Right. And then eventually <laughs> they find one. They find one. And it's like, this one right here, boys. She's a keeper. She's a keeper. This one right here. Sold American. <laughs> I'm bringing her home to mama. <laughs> Mom, this is Hex. <laughs> We've got a we've got a, a promise ring. We're yeah. gonna stay together at least for this this amount of time. This amount of time. I'm staked seven years, <laughs> average. <laughs> I've got a ladder. I got a ladder, mom. I I gotta tell you something. I I'm seeing Hedron right now too. <laughs> <laughs> On the side. That's my side. Mijo, what are you doing? Hex is being so good to you. What are you doing? Yeah, I guess sometimes you gotta get a little strange. Yeah, a little strange. <laughs> it's like, and then then. Don't, don't don't tell Hedge on this, but I'm seeing Icosa as well. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. So yeah. So yeah. when we're talking to our different, it's a great point that you make right. when you're talking about ten xing the size of a community that's involved with a particular product or an asset class or investment. You know, Tesla has to think the same way. Right. They, they say, who's going to be our? How are we going to capture the market share of? Right of uh, electric car enthusiasts and how are we going to stand apart from the other producers that are making, you know, uh, their own products? How do we, how do we capture that? Right. Yeah. There's whole teams that, that their focus is uh, getting as many people underneath the bell curve to buy their product or participate in their, their community, you know? So it's the same sort of thing. Like you speak to a certain audience yeah. and uh, Charlie speaks to a different audience that you do, even though you're, you're business partners. Yeah, right? of course. Um, yeah. And the same thing with everyone that represents a public figure, um, you know, role. So yeah, I, I agree with what you say, which is um, get out there and speak because there's someone in the audience that will find your content yeah. relatable. There's so, what, and the, I don't I can't remember who said this. There's 7 billion people out there. There's at least seven that'll fuck you. <laughs> what? Where's that phrase? I heard it somewhere, yeah. So it's one in a billion. So you're saying yeah. there's a chance. No, no, I mean, I mean hey, I mean, I, I mean th there's, a, there's enough crazy. If you think about it, right? Like, there's there's a, enough crazy people out there. Is that what you just said? Yeah. So somebody's going to commit? Someone's, someone's going to step on that landmine? Is that what you just said? Numbers game, baby. Shout out. <laughs> it's all about the numbers. No, no, but uh, but it, it's but it's I mean it's true. Like you're gonna find your audience, but at the same time you gotta really tr you gotta try and put you gotta put yourself out there. I mean, like I was I, I mean I wasn't like I was super I was super like not like talkative during high school and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then I just had to become because like well, you know and through and this this was like becoming a business owner was like I was forced to knock on doors. Mm -hmm. No, like actually knock on front door and doors. Like hey hey my name is Miguel. Can I mow your lawn? <laughs> Hey, can I do this and this and this? Oh, like your sprinkler's broken and stuff. Oh, can you fix it? Of course I can. You know, and then that, and then that's what gave me confidence and get, and get sales. Like, cause like, I mean, you're a good salesman, man, as Thanks. well. And I, cause I know you're, you've converted some pretty big people yeah. into hex and stuff. Can you talk a little bit about that? 
Uh, sure. You know, there's there's different people that have been inside my regular circle. Uh, maybe 2019 or so, it was more tech and Silicon Valley people because right. I was still connected to those people, and I only migrated to Puerto Rico in, in 2018. So I still had some of the bridges to the Bay Area. And then outside of that, it's been, you know, embracing more these things like uh, the collective advisors, which is uh, Jason Hartman, Ken McElroy, and George Gammon. They formed um, a mastermind. And I think that the Jason was on your show the other day. Yeah, great show. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. I mean, it was really good. Yeah, so, you know, one is the affiliation and the access to their Rolodex, so to speak, and who do they utilize as a lawyer, who and, do they have as a CPA. And they're the, called the collective, right? It's, the, it's called the collectiveadvisors.com, okay. and I can't remember if it's an OR or an ER in the advisors, but there's, there'll be a link, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, I've been following George uh, Gammon's uh, channel since its uh, origin uh, on YouTube. Oh, really? When did he start the channel? I, uh, I it know. was uh, maybe the very late part of 18 into the beginning of 19, somewhere in there. I, I remember I remember that when the AA was going on for Hex, I would watch his show, and then immediately right after his show would be like, here's the turnover, here's where yeah, yeah. you know they're going to release the coins. and Five it's gonna, o'clock, right? Everyone's yeah, yeah. going to be dashing over to uh, Uniswap and doing some arbitrage and see what the rates are and things like that. So I remember uh, being like subscriber 400 or 500 on his channel really? when Damon started. Dude, I have been saying this forever. Can you imagine if you can, I would be a billionaire right now yeah. if I could do this. If like, imagine you were able to take coin, a crypto coin or money and stuff and then essentially bet bet or put money on a um, on an up and coming like a Person. YouTuber. Yeah. And then get, and then claim money off their success. Pfft. Yeah. Man. Uh, it was his whiteboard, his, his persona type was something like what I related to, but it was also his whiteboard uh, content and three easy steps and all that kind of yeah. stuff that, would, that was great. And back then when his audience was smaller, uh, he would have like on Sundays or some kind of Q&A kind of sessions. And that, that's actually a lot, you know, even your networking uh, uh, in this digital era, it can't be effective through these uh, super chats and through yeah. these uh, participating uh, w as an audience member, but also like getting your answers uh, directly from a host. And so I remember that when George was doing that, um, I was already conditioned to kind of uh, engage the Hex community through the Telegram and through their YouTube channels. Right. And then now that somebody that's uh, outside of my realm of influence, um, I made friends with Richard, or not with Richard, with uh, George, George on his channel through the Super Chat stuff. Um, and a lot of there's been a lot of people actually that I've met because of YouTube content. Yeah, uh, they found me into like Kenman, uh, a really good friend of mine that lives in Medellin, Colombia. He's a, he's a top affiliate marketer. Uh, his his income comes from like three or four months of work, and you know affiliate marketing and so forth, right. and then about eight months of vacation. And <laughs> and uh, he found me in like 2014 when I was doing my YouTube content back then mm. about startup and about funding and capital and, uh, acquisition. So you can, what I'm saying is there's no one that's outside of your realm. You just need to be able to embrace uh, your own, or overcome your own fears so to it's, engage it's, them. So, I mean, let's get into this because I, I want to I like kind of help people on like, how, okay, how do I connections or how do yeah. I, how do I get access to this person? Because like, this is a really important, per let's just say as an example, right? I want to, I want to know Travis, but I don't know Travis, right? But Jim knows Travis. So I'm really one degree of separation away from Travis, really, yeah. right? Yeah. So I've got to honey dick you into giving his number. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a vocabulary in the trade for sure. Is a honey dicking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean part, every time that you meet someone again, you don't have to be so crass about how you think it about it. But I don't think of only the first the person standing and right in front of me when I'm first introduced. Like mm -hmm. if I get an introduction, a warm hand, uh, you know, a person basically saying, "Hey, this is Gary," and they're doing this uh, this this greeting or introduction right to their friend circle. Right. That's the first. You know, one, I'm going to have edification probably because this intermediary is introducing me or they're introducing that person to me, right? So there's a there's an introducing uh, event. Right. And uh, uh, the first things that I try to do is pick up their background and, mm. and not, not feel like it's an interrogation. Right. Like I don't want to do a machine gun, you know, Q&A and, and say, right. you know, like all of their history and give me your resume. Right. I, I but are you do doing that, that so you're like, okay, this is a puzzle piece that I can connect to this puzzle piece. Right. Is, yeah, because th that is something I don't see too many other people doing. Yeah. That's like one of your specialties is like, 
oh, and this is why I call you the living Rolodex. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I ever like, I like if I ever need like yeah, Gary, I, I'm trying to get into real estate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus Christ, Miguel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it your friend? I think I just got introduced to. Is, how do you pronounce the, the athlete guy that's training you right now? How do you pronounce it? Oh, O'Neill. Yeah, so yeah. O'Neill, I thought it was something with the Y or something like that. His last no, his use, channel. use K finance. I mean, okay. uh, use K um, fitness. Okay, yeah. so we I, I met him for the first time the other day, yeah. right? In in person, and uh, and we went to the cigar uh, the cigar lounge. Cigar lounge. Yeah. And within a couple of minutes, like I already knew who I wanted to connect him with, like yeah. you know, because the the warm introduction, you know, the the the, the friendly vibe of a ten or fifteen minute conversation. Now my brain is thinking, oh, this is who you need to speak with. This is what you right. need to. You know, I need to bridge you with. And part of it is like you need to invest into understanding that other person uh, and what they're about, what their motivation might be yeah. and things like that. Um, and, and be socially calibrated. You have to yeah. be socially calibrated on how you, how you frame your Q&A. No, Yasuke Fitness, he's a great guy and stuff. I'm a hey, shout out to him right now. I'm at I'm 247 yeah. pounds right now. I'm, You're looking I'm, good, man. I'm, like I'm slimming down, man. I'm, I'm trying to, I should, I'm, hopefully I'll be somewhere in the 220s yeah. by December. Yeah. Yeah. You had a you had a suit the other day. We had a, a charity event for at Michael Sartain's uh, thing. And right. Right after that, we got together, and uh, I hadn't seen you in like a week or two. And I was like, man. And you're with the fitness coach. And I was like, oh, right. this is what's this all about? <laughs> like he goes and and he tells you, yes, you can have that, uh, you know, for dinner. Or what's he do? How's he how's he like uh, handholding no, no, this, I, this like, fitness program? It's because he's a good person. Like, look, I, I I would want some like if I'm hanging around with somebody and like if I can help them get an opportunity or something, if I think they're a good person, yeah. I'll do that. I was like, he, he, he wanted like information on like how to, cause I've, I've been teaching him like, actually, I don't even have the book here, but I was, I kind of, I gave him one of those Grant Cardone books. Yeah. It was a millionaire mindset. Maybe. The millionaire mindset. It's just, it's a good little book. I mean, obviously it's not gonna all the, you know, all the, you know, it's not gonna have everything in there. Right. But it's just, just to change the mindset a little bit and just think about the numbers of like, okay, how do, how, what can I do to my business to expand it out? Right. And I just got him. I mean, he would, we would talk about fitness and we, I teach him crypto. And then from there, like, I would then teach him like, how could you like triple his business yeah. and revenue and stuff like that. And then from there, he was just like, dang, this is crazy. I've never thought of all these sort of things. So watch him, what to blow your mind. Here's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're like, and he was like, dude, Gary's the man. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and it, it is it does go to what you absorb. Like, what information are you absorbing? What are you reading? Who are you associating with? Right? right? Because that is your mindset. Uh, you know, I say all the time about Dale Carnegie, uh, when friends influence people. Uh, it's it's very useful to take that information in in your teens, in your twenties. Right. Read the book again in your thirties. Read it again in your forties. Like, you know, you should constantly be absorbing that information. I think it's very useful, and it is because. Uh, we are always changing and our psychologies are changing, things like that, and to some degree, you know, the city that we're living in, the culture that we're a part of. But um, yeah, I, 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 at, th at this point in my life, I feel more like, like statesman, you know, like there's a politicalness, a political savviness that has developed right. over my experiences. And I just want to relate that to, to new people, yeah. young people. I mean, when you said that, all I thought about, it was a conversation that I did have with O'Neill, which is like, I didn't understand how much politics there were as mm -hmm. well. It's really strange as well. Like as you get into the, like, man, YouTubers are a bunch of drama queens. Let's just be for a fucking. Bitch. They're doing it for the clicks, man. I mean, they're doing it for the clicks. No. So much for the clicks. But some of them are really in their feelings. Yeah. In their feelings and their skirts and shit. Like really are in their feelings, and you know, there's politics. And then you by you doing one thing, they're like, oh my pussy, oh <laughs> destroyed, right? And and then and other things like in other ways, you know, it's like you. But but there is these kind of like little politic games as well as like you also have to be a, like as you get more and more famous or you have more I wouldn't even call it fame but like more influence or clout or something like that um, you have to be more and more careful with your actions because they have more consequences like if I told everybody get into this coin right now and it rugged the next day yeah Jesus Christ yeah you know yeah, not you, intentional you, of course but like that but that's the important part that it wasn't intentional so everyone can make an honest mistake yeah right but. That's the, a lot of people are, aren't understanding what kind of power they wield. And then this is why a lot of people are kind of pissed off. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say any coin names or nothing, but this is why like a certain community is like really pissed off right now that like, did we get honey dicked? Possibly. <laughs> maybe, but like, or maybe not. It hasn't played out. It hasn't, it hasn't yeah. played out yet, but that, a lot of people in the community are feeling like that because it was like, oh, I had that, I had all these people on my show and like I, I gave them a launch pad and then from there they just vampire attacked. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. You know, and then people are just pissed off because coins are down 95 percent like yeah. how can you say anything if your your coin's down 98 percent and you, and mine's on, like yours is down 91 percent and mine's down 98 percent they're yeah. both down 
well, yeah, but mine actually touched these crazy prices before. Yeah. And it's still alive in sales and community. Yours just launched and just went down, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, again, I, I don't want to get into too much about yeah, a specific yeah, of course, product. Of course, I, of what I do want to have is about the frame. And the frame yeah. is uh, absorb as much. You have to have responsibility for making the decision on what information you're processing and holding as true and what information you're processing and holding as false. So I think you should take in opinions right they may not be as useful but opinions and sentiment and emotion yeah. that other people are putting out there about their content and then you have to come down to your experience and say hmm what has this worked out in the past have i heard something like this before yeah. what did that trend or what did that do in this other coin or token or project or founder and then from that experience if you have no experience you are relying on influencers quote unquote influencers uh, and you're, 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 there's so much murkiness about whose, whose interest is at heart when information is put out there. No pun intended. Yeah, at heart, <laughs> at heart, at heart. Um, but anyway, it's not, not to get too much into the weeds. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take in the information, uh, process it, use your own logic. And um, you know, maybe if you have a trusted resource yeah. that spend every day 24 seven in the crypto field, like, uh, you know, the, your, uh, cultivate crypto. Is that the name of your programs? Yeah. I mean the, the crypto mindset courses crypto and, mindset and the programs. Citadel. Yeah. And the well. Citadel, right? Yeah. So, so, you know, you guys, you spend hundreds of thousands of hours over the course of a year, just, just doing your own research. Yeah. And then that feeds out to your audience and your, your content. I yeah. mean, one, I mean, one thing that I've been talking forever about was kind of like the, the dollar milkshake theory. Oh yeah, right. I, know, I know Brent. I mean, yeah. so I, he's in Puerto Rico as well. So I've met him several times. He's part of uh, uh, George's group of people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I would love to interview him one day. Actually, yeah. that'd be really cool. I but, could arrange like, that actually. Hey, networking one on one. Look at that. <laughs> dun, dun, I've got I've got his I've got his number in my phone. Boom. I, I, I'll, I'll message him before long. Dun dun dun. But no, but I but I've been um, I mean I've been saying obviously not to the level that he's been saying that and stuff. But I've been saying like, yeah, we're probably. I mean like, cause it was like I, one thing I was and so maybe this is the American in me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just like I was just getting pissed off because like I'm on the internet a lot and it's just like all these Euro heads, all these guys like the dollar shit, America's crap, everywhere else is better. Oh my god. The women's stuff, I don't know, whatever. That's on everybody else, right? I mean you, you get like what what most guys' criteria about women is like, does she like me? Yes. <gasps> <gasps> That's, That's unusual. What one in one in a billion? What'd you say? Seven out of seven billion people? Somebody's yeah. got to commit. And then it's like, <laughs> I got a shot. I got a chance. Right? It's but a shot. I got a shot. But it's it's the um it, I mean, it, I don't know. I guess it's it's that it's that sort of. It's you that said the euro head, so it's yeah. about the about the currency, right? So so it's all about the, the yeah. So you had tons of people just being very negative in the United States dollar. Oh my God, the cabal of all the of all these Asian nations and Russia and all this stuff, and then they're all getting mollywopped right now. Yeah, yeah. All getting mollywopped. Yeah. As predicted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I I got a lot of fl flack for this. This wasn't in the first crypto mindset we did, but this was in like, December of 2020. Yeah. I told our guys, and I had a lot of not not any mean DMs, but I had probably like 50 people message me telling me I was kind of full of shit on my macro thesis. No, I mean, <laughs> and, so uh, Brent, Brent's got a Brent yeah. Johnson has a ton of content about this, and I think his company is like San Diego San Diago Capital. First time I met him was at Rebel Capitalist, actually, yeah. the first event that they had in Miami. I invited uh, Matt or uh, Dollar Cost or uh, crypto coffee crypto to that coffee. event. Yeah. And, I, and I actually, and you know, this is part of the networking thing. So the networking thing before that event, I knew that the event was gonna happen. I hadn't met George in person before. I'd had conversations, but never met him in person. Mm. And I knew about this uh, Rebel Capitalist event was gonna happen in I think May of last year, like a year and a half ago or something. Um, I reached out to some people and said, hey, would you like to go as well? I'm gonna be going as a networker. I'm gonna right. try and you know, crack this uh, panel, so to speak, and get them involved with crypto. So uh, Matt stepped up and he came down from Chicago and we went to the event. But you know, I had weeks to prepare and I actually bought a specialized printer that you make uh, hotel keys with. Whoa! Okay. It's a specialized printer. And, and I made, uh, I went to all of these guys, all, it was like 12 or 14 panelists, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, you know, Robert Breedlove, yeah. there's all these different people, right? Uh, George Gammon and so forth. And I went and I got their websites, found their websites, found their social media on Instagram, found their Twitters and uh, handles and so forth. And then inside of that uh, specialized printer, I could embed uh, QR mm. and I could embed um, like a like a link tree kind of thing. Right. Right. So I made these cards like five five copies for each panelist, like sixty cards, 12, yeah. 12 panelists. 
and I had been in Medellin. I knew I was going to go to Medellin, and I bought um, a bunch of wallets, like like six dollar wallets that look really nice, yeah. you know, nice little other wallet wallets for credit cards. And then I put it in there, and it was basically as a giveaway. So when I went to the event, nobody knew me. Like right. seven hundred people in the room, and nobody knew me. But uh, I knew all the panelists. I'd done my research, and then I had made this giveaway. And I'm a stranger. I'm not a panelist promoting a product. I'm not selling them anything. Yeah. I just made their networking card, their touchless uh, way that they could share their social content by someone just touching their phone. Right. And someone else bring their phone to it. So I made that special thing, and I made an investment to do that. And then I glad handed, and uh, you know I met. Uh, Robert Barnes, uh, who's basically one of the top lawyers in the nation. I mean, all the different speakers that were there for um, Brent as well, like yeah. Brent Johnson and so forth. And that was an introduction. And, and Coffee saw me doing all that. And he's like, holy crap, like, what is this guy doing? Like, why yeah. is he getting invited to these events? And why is, why is he, like, breaking into this environment? That's the first time I met Jason Hartman the same way. Right. And he's like, man, you guys, are, you're really good at this. Like, you should join this, uh, meta, this mindset thing or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Being prepared is kind of the point of, of that story. It was like, I knew the event was going to come up. I had data at my fingertips. I built a special thing that made it easier for them to network instead of me. You made yourself valuable. I made myself yeah. valuable without them knowing me. So I was, the, the giveaway was that they were, they were broadcasting their own brand. It wasn't that they were broadcasting mine. I'm a stranger to them. They were broadcasting right. their own. And they're like, wow, why is this guy giving value without asking? Yeah, altruistic. Yeah, yeah it's like... That's smart. That's a smart, you see, right? Damn, that's a key right there. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you don't have to do the exact same thing, but basically making yourself useful to people <laughs> is a great way to kind of break in. Um, I mean, what, what else would you say in terms of like, because it's like, all right, so obviously we got the super chat thing. That's a, that's a great way to yeah. kind of, that is like, you know, a hundred bucks. I, I would say like a hundred bucks up yeah. is kind of when you, where people are like, oh, wow, who's yeah. this person, right? That might be a way to get people's attention. Um, out, but outside of that, right? Um, I think live in-person events, if your favorite YouTuber or like somebody you want to meet is having an event, go to the event. Mm -hmm. Like you never know if you, you, you never know. I mean, the answer might be no, but like it's not zero, right? Well, an, another amazing uh, example is uh, George has uh, someone that's like a PA uh, that helps a lot. His name is Josh. And Josh uh, is... Oh, the one that was in the studio with us? Uh, where? In Fresh and Fit maybe he's a young guy yeah younger guy yeah 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 so he's got a tattoo on his uh on his uh whenever we went to okay. apply the karma i saw he had a tattoo of the of george's logo it was gotcha. very interesting <laughs> he's like a 20 year old kid right yeah but he also has like seven employees in the philippines making social media content and things like right. that and he's he's entrepreneurial and uh you know i heard his story maybe like about a month ago or something about how how he first met george and it's something like that too like he heard that george is going to be in town uh, maybe like 500 miles away, a friend wanted to go and you know meet him or something like that, and like they just flew randomly and and basically set like a dinner appointment. They were able to go. His he, George doesn't answer his email, but for some reason he did that one, hmm. and uh, you know broke the ice so to speak. And now he he's at just about every event helping George with his uh, content distribution and stuff. Damn. But you got to be valuable, and I don't. Know, and that's that's the challenge is. You don't want to be a simp. You don't want to be a sink offense. You don't want to. You don't want yeah. to just be a kiss ass or something like that. That's not the. That's not your role. Your role as a, you know, if you if you find someone that you respect their information, you respect their knowledge or their experience, um, you know, learn. Like if you're in a learning mode, you're going to be received well usually, right? So even Richard Hart, when he's talking on his early streams and he's engaging the audience, says, "Let's see what Chad has to say." Right. He would say all the time. You know, bring smarter questions, bring better questions to me because, you know, I, I want to feel useful. Like, right. I, I, want to, I want to share information with you. Like, he's in a statesman's kind of psychology at that time, too. He's trying to share information from his experience. But you got to bring quality questions also. Yeah. And that was, and that was a tough part because, I mean, my, all the easy questions were asked. Now mm -hmm. it's time for the creativity part. Yeah, so. now it's on you as an audience member if you're going to participate to say, oh, now let me think about the vocabulary that I choose. Let me right. think about the frame of the question and actually see if it has use. Right. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember trying to think of like, Jesus, what question could I, could I yeah, ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you, uh, here's another thing that you did. And, and I, I listened to the one that you just did, your podcast you just did with Jason Hartman yeah. like three times now. And uh, again, props to, to Jason for being able to share so much information. Yeah. But you know how he's able to share that? Because he has read 
so much and he's right. been in the field 30 something years uh you know basically a b testing if his theories are correct and they have proven to be correct he's a very wealthy man from this his, his yeah. uh, experience and the same thing with you is you know i heard stories about you know like you said you didn't have as much of a social circle yeah. for some phase but you were doing workouts and you would put uh headphones on and just yeah. basically you know, 2x or 3x or speed speed listen but listen to like so much volume of information and that basically altered your vocabulary yeah. it, it it made you when you use certain keywords and you know what the context is and that person that's in that expert field hears you they 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 identify they're like oh this guy actually knows what he's talking about right because you you have invested into understanding that vocabulary into understanding the context of their content right no, dude, thank you so much, man. I mean, yeah, it's just, um, if you didn't know anything, and you, but if it's like, just go listen to stuff you're passionate about. Yeah. Become, become unbelievably like knowledgeable in that space. And and within within a short period of time, I'd say six months or less, you could be at the 1% of, of knowledge mm -hmm. of, in terms of people. And then, then from there, it's just figuring out a way that you either start YouTubing or you start being someone that could just make connections for people or find a way to kind of make money with it. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is actually something like I've learned a lot from a lot of people on YouTube. Like Gary, I watched the whole Gary V blow up and stuff yeah. from like just the beginning. I mean, it give, was, give, 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 give. How much the, content he's given? Right, the thank, the thank you economy, as well as like there's this book called Small, uh, Small Big or Small Little Giants, mm -hmm. which are like these hyper profitable small companies mm -hmm. that they just chose. Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grow it anymore. Yeah, but just because it just kicks out so much cash and it's awesome. It's almost, it's almost like a mega lifestyle brand. Yeah. in a way, and um. The, the, there's there's ways for you to kind of build businesses. There's kind of ways for you to build businesses to really like bring in cash flow and stuff as well as I mean you just you, you just got to kind of choose what you want to do. But but Gary Vee said this this best. If you're like the, you, you it could be the tiniest niche ever. Like like you, it could be I don't even know like artisanal fake plants. Are, that, <laughs> there's that are, none of those around here. Yeah, there's none of those. <laughs> here. But super tiny artisanal plants that you, that you that you hand paint or build and stuff. And then you may find out that you're the best person to create like scenery, and then and then comes to find out that like these these um, Warhammer three thousand and these uh, or four thousand and um, these World of Warcraft guys or some of these guys go like Dungeons and Dragon guys are like, dude, M Miguel's like the best guy to actually create scenery for me. And then you then you be, you, you it's becoming the one percent yeah. of one percent in a tiny niche, but you're so powerful in that niche that you just can you can um, ask for outsized returns yeah. for that knowledge. Well, you have all of the market share. Yeah, you've drilled down on your specialization to where you represent, uh, like you know, the, what is it? The people that make the models for the movies and they they blow up the Death Star or whatever. They've got to make somebody's got to make that Death Star. They've got to make that model. So you become an expert in the field. And then that leads to other things like maybe the Mythbusters or, you know, Adam or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're like, wow, how did you get a TV show? Well, I've been an expert in the field of, you know, special effects for 20 years. Yeah. So now I can make a TV show about it. And they used to do commercials and stuff. <laughs> you, you know those machines where you like, they would just throw something down and they would just dun, 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 yeah. dun. You, like the, the breakfast machine? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They had, a, yeah, I remember they had like a skate. It was like a Nike skate or something that just rolled itself or some remote control shoe. Anyways, um... Yeah, so again, you can drill down in your expertise. You can find some kind of niche that you represent most of the market share, if not all of it, and you'll be the expert in your field. Like, right. you know, I, I think that that's a that's a great investment of your time, basically. Right. Um, and and that helps you. You know, you you are. It's almost like when you do the Google search and you're like, uh, you, you know, a couple of keywords. You put it in, and the and one name always pops up to the top of the list. Right. You want to be that guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you always want to be searched and stuff like that, but it's just putting out, call. like, you don't have to be immediate, like, this is the hard thing is, like, we, we are sort of hitting, like, the digital age, mm -hmm. and st I mean, we're, we're in the digital age, but I'm talking about where, I mean, whatever happens with money, wh whether it goes the fiat route or the cryptocurrency route, obviously, yeah. I'm the crypto route, right, I think, but um, there's one thing for sure, like, we are status animals, Yeah, and that's not going away. And now with all these social media platforms and, and things like that, you, you kind of like, like, th like I think Fresh and Fit say this and as well as a bunch of other people say this as well, you know, shout out to Fresh and Fit, but uh, you know, Instagram is the biggest dating app in the world. Okay. More, more than Tinder, more than anything else. Right? I use it for social contact. I mean, both, I mean, for all, you know, females seem to dominate the field. You would right. think like Richard likes to say, oh, all the girls are on Instagram. That might be true. But there's a lot of guys on there too. Why? Because the girls are on there. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you on Instagram? Because the girls are on there. So I, I even when I do my networking and things like that, I the first thing I do is say, hey, how's it going? And do it with yeah. the, the introduction of a couple minutes. And even people like Patrick, the first time I met Patrick uh, Sartain, right? Yeah. So we go to an event 
And then I'm like, hey, I haven't met you before. Who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm Michael's brother. And I was like, oh, great. Where are you from? And he's like, oh, I'm from Dallas. And why are you doing here? Like, okay, like I'm, I'm helping to develop, you know, like the studio stuff that we did here the other day. Yeah. And uh, he's a great personality. He's a nice personality. And I was like, I don't want to lose your contact. Like, how can I find you? You know, what, what's, what media are you on? He's like, oh, I'm on Instagram. I was like, okay, great. So you do the contact, right? Right. But then the first thing I do is... Uh, I take a photo together with the person. Like I was like, hey, let's take a real quick photo so that you can remember me, I'll remember you. I take a photo with my, my camera and then I send to his account or to, if it's a her, her account, yeah. the photo of that context. Like when did we first meet now? Here's the photo, so you remember and I remember, right? And it helps me so much with like my identification because I can't remember names that well. Yeah, yeah. I remember like faces very well. And uh, so I'm doing it for me but I'm also doing because now I'm loaded in their phone and now they have a reference and right. now there's a familiarity, right? And it, it, it helps to rebuild. So I met Travis, you know, first time I had a conversation with him was today, conversation. Yeah. He was recording the other day, but first time I had a conversation. And now I'll always remember a lot about the context of his business and the context of relationships that he already has um, uh, that I can maybe help or develop, right? So it's, it's, it is the Gary Vaynerchuk thing. Yeah. Uh, first time I met Gary was an interesting story too. Uh, I used to run a startup accelerator in the Bay Area. Mm. Uh, basically, uh, it's kind of like that TV show, you know, the guy that's like he's in a bathrobe and he's got Wait, Silicon Valley. <laughs> Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh yeah, I've got a house in Palo Alto and I'm a startup accelerator. You're like, no, you got four roommates. They just happen to be building a tech. You know. Right. right. <laughs> so I did something like that. I actually leased. I had property, but I also had leased uh, uh, a fairly large home, private residence in Palo Alto and one block away was Steve Jobs house. Steve had already passed away, but his wife was still living there. Yeah. Uh, two blocks away was uh, co-founder of uh, Google. Uh, five blocks away was uh, Stanford University. So it was a place where a lot of people wanted to be because venture capital money is there. Like you know, people that had made money in tech lived in Palo Alto and uh, people, and then the proximity to Stanford, which is kind of like this bastion of tech right. and startups. So my tenants, basically what I did was I set up, um, I think I had three bedrooms, maybe four, but three bedrooms with uh, four bunk beds in each bedroom. Mm. So I was housing like 15 people in bunk beds. Um, some special, special, like I built them, I built them custom. I'll send you, I'll show you pictures. Yeah, please do that. Yeah. I've always wondered how, how the setup really was. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking like sheets or something. No, no. I'll say it looked really cool. So basically what I did was, um, I made sure that the square footage would work. And then I bought, um, pallet racks. You know how, when you go to Costco and things are on a rack yeah. or you go to Ikea and things are on a rack, those can hold 4,000 pounds. Mm. So basically I'm out of the length, they're eight foot long bays, you know, where you yeah, put yeah. stuff inside there by about four foot tall and one, two, three, four. So it's basically a big block of four pallet rack areas. Right. And then I bought, uh, you know, uh, single sized, uh, Ikea beds you know, or mattresses. And then uh, it did have curtains to have your privacy and everything okay, like good, that. Good, good. It had lights and it had Wi-Fi and it had, uh, you know, all the stuff or whatever. But it was basically a house that part of the property was a dormitory where people would sleep. And then I, I had gone to Ikea or I found them through Craigslist and stuff like that was a bunch of cubicles in the main living room, which is a big living room. Yeah. And they had like 10 or 12 uh, working spaces at a dedicated podcast area. It was a very little small area where you could do like teleconferencing if you're going to get your uh, venture capital and right. things like that. Like a conference room? Yeah, a little conference oh, room that was cool. all networked and stuff. Damn. And then I had like a social, like, you know, play video games and uh, uh, play basketball kind of area. So, yeah, so that, that contact, that context, I ran for like three years. And it was around 8,000 per month was the overhead, 7,000 was the lease, about 1,000 was utilities. Yeah. And then it was making something like 28,000 or 30,000 per month. Nice. Yeah, so it was making a good income in addition to my cardiology work. <laughs> so, so I was a workaholic what, in those what, years. But what, what kind of companies were created out there or people were yeah, trying to start? Yeah, yeah, so there was people that launched, you know, kind of conventional things too, like a clothing line a person was a founder of a clothing line that did well. Uh, one of the guys actually, he was a Brazilian that came and he liked the environment and he was a chemist. And I remember that he stayed there for about three months. He got his ideas and his patents uh, processed. And then maybe about a year later, uh, he sold the company for $8 million, which was a great startup wow. launch for him. That's great. Uh, but basically he invented a, uh, an eggless mayonnaise, a mayonnaise with no eggs. So it was like a vegan mayonnaise or something. Huh. Right. 
another another set of guys that were I think they were Ukrainian. They had uh, this is before you know uh, Alexa on your desk existed, so that didn't exist at that time. But they were the precursor to Alexa, and they sold their company to um, to uh, Amazon. Same thing. Wow. Yeah. Dang. So, so people people find stuff, and and actually there was people that had exits, and they made millions of dollars from the exits of their companies, but they came back to the incubator basically for ideas for the next thing that they wanted to do, or they'd find their co-founder or right. whatever there. Do people find more energy like being in those environments? Obviously, it's a part of it's a necessity because you you want to keep costs. Yeah, yeah. And stuff. But but do some people just they could rent a house and do all that stuff? But they're like they'd rather be around the action. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, that's that's the highlight. So it was a specialized kind of housing. Right. When you go to Thailand and you're in a hostel and you're with backpackers that are you know they're taking a year off from college, they're probably gonna get high drunk and they're just right. gonna you know, basically no deodorant. Be tenants. <laughs> no deodorant. They're gonna piss on your bed at three in the morning, coming back from the club. Um, so, you know, it was a hostel, but it was a hostel for entrepreneurs only right. people. And we vetted them. You couldn't just randomly book. Mm. You basically, we had, we had a, uh, a qualification list, a roster. Right. Um, and our friend was running something like that as well. That was called startup embassy. I think, um, that was a smaller operation, but we just basically put it to scale. Oh, and what I was getting at was I met people. That was a great mayoral kind of experience. You, after, after cardiology work, I'd get done about five o'clock in Santa Clara, and then I would drive over to the property to check on people in the evenings and do say, hey, was this productive? What, what's right. your stumbling block? You know, how long are you gonna be here for? And one of the people that was a tenant back then was a Ukrainian guy named Kirill, and uh, he was doing like some film thing or whatever, like a documentary thing or something. And then he basically was there for like three or four months, and then he went on to Los Angeles. He moved to Los Angeles. And then uh, he came back. I had shut down the property in 2017. He came back or messaged me and says, hey, are you still running that? I want to come back up to the Bay Area. I said, no, it's closed. He says, oh, well, there's going to be this blockchain event in Santa Monica. Do you want to go? And I was like, what's blockchain? What is that? And he's like, that's kind of like startup stuff right i was like oh that sounds cool i'll go to that. <laughs> like startup stuff i'll go i'll go check out the startup <laughs> stuff you know and that, yeah, met, yeah. that's where i met like alex mashinsky from you know his 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 flaming comet of uh, burnout or whatever right but right. It, he was uh, just running a card table or whatever at the thing in his own display and uh oh, you know, booth or something yeah it, was, it wasn't even a booth it was just a card table with like brochures about Damn. celsius and then um it was uh Vinny, I forgot his last name, uh, Lingham or something, Vinny Lingham, something like that, from um, Civic. He was a founder of Civic. Oh, okay, okay. And so I met these people. I was like, oh, this is great. This is good. And then, like, I speculated, and the thing went well. And then six months later, the thing crashed and burned into 2018 and 19. I was like, this sucks. I hate crypto. <laughs> Like, how was that bamboozled into this shit? What well, is this not startup? There's no accountability. You just give them the money and then they're going to run off forever. Damn it. A, a white paper and a dream. <laughs> yeah, all these different LinkedIn profiles and things like that are like of uh, Brad Pitt as the CFO of whatever show you know, or whatever coin. Have you, all of that, that shenanigans. Have you seen the picture where like there, there's this guy on, on Twitter where he made, he made a, during 2017, he made a fake ICO. Yeah. And it was just different pictures of himself, his hair different. Like it was it's the him same and, guy and five, the same times. five times. Over. And he actually had he had two million people send him two million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And then he like he says, You guys, this was a giant joke. Shame on y'all for falling for this shit. This me and five he explained he's like, I yeah. he sent all the money back. Wow. He said, yeah, That's no, no, unusual. No, no, well it was it was to, it was a social experiment yeah. showing like look how retarded people are. Yeah. <laughs> like look at look at the fervor, like like all I have to do is show a picture like this, a couple of fake, uh, a couple of fake LinkedIn pictures, and he, he was literally just himself. He's like head of VP, head of marketing, <laughs> or CTO, and then like there's a picture of me without my glasses, me with glasses. Like, <laughs> I remember, I can't remember who it was that was a rug, but it was something like a that. Lot it, was, of them. it was an ICO. It had a website. I remember people got excited about. It. I didn't participate, but I remember people got excited about. It. They're talking about it and hyping it up, yeah. and then people checked back after the ICO launched, and the website no longer was uh, the pictures and, and imagery. It was just the word penis. It was just like in the top left corner it was just the word penis. Like right. <laughs> that was there was like that's what my my <laughs> thing bought was just a just a, a dormant website. Now this just you know f you. That's... <laughs> Terrible. I can't remember what company. I think I may know what you're talking about, or like, or maybe it was a different one where the, this guy's like, he he rugged him, but he was like, "You guys, I took I, I took." He was like, 
The website just said, I took your money. Ha ha. <laughs> evil, evil. Fuck it was just evil, him, dude. right? So that's one again. So like coming back into crypto in 2019, you know, late 18, I started to listen to the Telegram rooms again. Uh, you know, 2019, I heard about Richard Hart through uh, a friend uh, through Crypto Beatles. You might have known him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I heard How's about he doing? Richard. I haven't seen him in a minute. You know, with that red, or uh, with the with the whole election stuff, he got political for a while mm. uh, uh, when on the last presidential election cycle, and I think he got his channels like demonetized or taken off, and then he went oh, on shit. to like Rumble or something. But I haven't heard from him really since. Got it. Got yeah. it. That's, I mean, there's a lot of guys who have gotten dead and gone. Wait, not dealt with. <laughs> Wait, pause. Dealt, not dead been, and gone. They've been dealt with. They've been dealt with. Yeah. But I mean, I said this on my, sh um, I said this actually on Rollo's show when we were, with, when I was on there with Mike Sartain. Yeah. When we were, when we were going through the entire um, Andrew Tate interview, where I was saying like this originally started with Alex Jones. A lot of people on the left didn't want to defend Alex mm -hmm. Jones. Mm -hmm. Even some people on the right. Now, now Andrew Tate got kicked off. Then Sneeko. There's, they're getting very bold. I mean, we're, we just saw like they they shot they shot this nuke first. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. Damn, people didn't. And they even mad. had uh, you saw the news recently about PayPal. PayPal having uh, ability to uh, basically fine you because your uh, maybe even your political messaging. And they say things like you know you can't share misinformation. Well, who's mm. the judge of the information? Right. 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 And so uh, that's a big topic right now is, uh, you, you know, it's not even that you, you get denied a transaction like the Canadian truckers. Right. It's not that you're getting denied a transaction. It's the actual money is claimed out of your account as a fine. So, you know, that's crazy. It's, it's getting crazy, you know. Yeah, I mean, I will that's why we need cryptocurrencies. <laughs> <laughs> immutable, immutable smart contracts. Transactions that get forced through. <laughs> I mean, it is beautiful. I mean, it, it, it does, like, it's ultimate responsibility, but once you send a transaction, the money gets there. Yeah. But if you fuck up that transaction, it's gone. Yeah, well, well, I mean, again, so, so let's speak to that for a moment. Sure. Um, there was a bridge that uh, challenged the Binance chain. and During I, the hack? Recently, it was yeah, like a yeah. five hundred million dollar uh, bridge failure or something like that, right? Yeah. And uh, CZ has said this in the past that he wanted to roll back. Uh, I think it was Bitcoin they wanted to roll back in the past. And then this one, he also said something like he would like to one. He paused it, but two was that he wanted to basically like Ethereum uh, forked out the, oh, the DAO. Yeah, like the DAO hack. Same yeah. sort of thing. So, do you think that there should be? an immutable uh, token of any sort? Do you think immutability is valuable? Or yes. irreversibility? I think so. I think it's very important. Now, not all chains are going to are gonna have that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be hard and fast like that, but like Ethereum is, for right now, it, it is immutable mm -hmm. for now. Bitcoin is immutable, even though there has been rollbacks on both chains in the past, but now you can't do that. So it it's sort of like... it. it People wish that until like something bad really, really happens. They wish it exactly. So it's, it is that case, right? Like right. it would be, it would be amazing until you get robbed. Yeah. <laughs> when you're, you're robbed, you're like, wait hey. a minute, I got robbed. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I mean, it's like, it's a classic thing that Richard used to say back in the past and stuff like, you know, hey, they wouldn't roll back the chain for the guy who made Solidity. Yeah. You know, Gavin, Gavin, Wood, Gavin Woods and stuff like that. But you yeah. guys, here, here's some shade. Here's some stuff. So from what I heard, from what I heard, uh, the... The Dow hack may have possibly been off of code that he was kind of overseeing. Mm. So that's why they're like, we're not going to roll it back because you're the one that caused it. <laughs> possibly, as well as like, I'm not saying that much, but like it, it seemed it seemed like it coordinated a little bit of an attack a mm. bit right there because he got his stuff rugged and then he's like, oh well, and then he and then he had to go rent to the Chinese for money. Mm. From what I of, of what I know, maybe I'm just full of shit, but that's yeah. that's what I heard, yeah. you know, and um. Well, you know, I think yeah. people are craving sound something like if you're going to make a political platform and you're going to get elected into office, hold, you know, true to what you said that got you there. If you're going to exchange and you're going to make a, a currency trade or a contract with someone, stand stand on it. Right. Like, hey, I signed this contract and we're going to fulfill it. Uh, I made this payment and now it's in your hands in custody and I'm not going to claw it back or reclaim it or go through some challenge, right? Yeah. So we are looking for soundness in something. Uh, even the idea, like the, you know, the guilt, I used to be part of like this gold and silver uh, narrative, this gold bug, silver bug. Oh, me too, you man. Know, the, the zombies, uh, when they come knocking on the door and... One day and, a piece <laughs> of silver will be able to buy you a house. Yeah, yeah, a thousand dollar ounce uh, silver. Yeah. 
Um, and, and the idea of that was, oh, you can't, you know, once you've made the transaction and you've exchanged a, a piece of metal with another human being, you can't reclaim it. Well, yeah, you can. It's called lead bullets. Shout out Wrench Gang, baby. <laughs> the $5 wrench attack, right? Yeah, you ever heard of Wrench, yeah, wrench Gang? <laughs> wrench Gang's fucking brutal, man. So, you know, so it, there, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that's reversible. Um, and I do like the, the crypto uh, narrative of it potentially not being reversible. So, like, can you roll back Ethereum now? I don't know. Can you roll back other things? I don't know. Like, I, I trust people like you and Charlie as far as the commentary in that field. Right. I mean, I mean they were saying BNB was decentralized and then they just... Like, is it decentralized? I mean, like, if you know, if you actually know, like, you can actually call all nine. If he dollars. calls all of the validators and says, pause. Pause. Yo, homie, can you pause? I... <laughs> So, I mean, but at the same time, he's running, I mean, the blockchain is more of a bit, it's, it's a, it's not supposed to be decentralized. It's, it's supposedly supposed to be centralized, but if you actually look at it, right, like he does need ultimate control because it is a corporation and it is a company and see, I mean, I will say this about CZ, he's only really made one big mistake in terms of his career that I saw. He actually had in 2018, he was about to launch a Uniswap. Oh, really? He, a DEX. He had the capability to launch a DEX, didn't do it. And then on top of that, then later on, right, we had Bancor and we had Bancor and we had um, Balancer, I think, come out at yeah. the time, but it just, they weren't that popular. Why weren't and, they so popular? I, I never understood that. I don't know. I mean, I think it was pretty janky. You couldn't do much stuff on it. it. The swaps did, I think the swaps did work, but I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think it was because the, the story, here's the story is that basically Vitalik Buterin, he basically created Uniswap in terms of the, the theory, like, here's the math, here's how it worked. I don't know who would create this. <sighs> They just handed off really? the. Really? They handed yeah. off the. Like, yeah, the guy. Hayden? Like, he gave it directly to Hayden, it, or he, just Hayden ran with it? They, they gave it to him. Wow. They gave it to him, and he was like, look at this shit. Oh, it's, theory, it's theory, but it's possible. And then he went to. No, I'm not taking nothing away from Hayden. He did actually create it, but that's yeah. all of Italic shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. People don't know that either. I didn't like, know that either. Yeah, yeah. And then that's what ended up happening. And then, but remember, crypto, the people who buy crypto, I mean, crypto is not algorithms. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. It's people. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you can't rid, you can't get rid of the human element. So the yeah. story is like this golden thing, this golden um, the 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 what's it called the ten holy commandments of Uniswap were passed down from from God himself, yeah. Italic, down to this to, down to Moses, yeah. and then he created the Ark, which is Uniswap, and then you know, yeah. and, and then people are like, wow, this is amazing. But it was a pretty simplistic thing, and even at the time, it was failing. You know why? You know why Uniswap did really well? Yeah, hex. Yeah, yeah. Straight yeah. up, like because you you need users using it, and then because we we were all the volume people are like, well, I guess it was the one that's working, and it was so simple. And the other thing too is like, the interface it, was very easy too. Very e well, it, it was. It's if you don't know what it was, I mean, even for me, like I was teaching guys about, and Charlie as well. I mean, me and Charlie were teaching the guys in 2020 about Uniswap, and they're like, Miguel, who's gonna use this bullshit? I mean, what's the point of this crap? And then I told, so so I was like, here's the thing. So you, you know how earlier I said, like, you know, Instagram is the biggest dating app in the world. Okay. The reason I said that is because that's a honey dick. <sighs> it's true. It is the biggest. So it's like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, yeah, 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 I should do this business stuff. But then I should think with my dick right here and then like make a social presence so I can also like talk to girls. But but then that brings a positive. So basically I'm, I'm giving them, a, you know, this candy medicine for like, yo, go make an Instagram so you can like talk to chicks. But really it's like, so you can actually like, you might actually get like something in your life later on yeah. because you're being social and stuff. Yeah. It's now with the, Unis, with the Uniswap thing, right? Um, Obviously, Hex kind of pumped up Uniswap. Yeah, right? I mean, Richard, Richard popularized it, you know, as a trading platform instead of some of the, there were centralized exchanges that were trading Hex, yeah. but Richard popularized uh, and, and educated the audience about how the DEX was working. And, you know, the trust level seemed to be there as far as we, because we, I didn't look at the code of Uniswap and right. I didn't know that me sending to that platform was ever going to give me right. something back. I have no idea. But I did trust people like uh, Kyle the Dev and... Yeah. Uh, Richard and so forth narrative. So it was useful and we were, we did tend out, turn out to be most of the volume for, I think five months, you know, the first five months of its origin or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then on top of that too, they also, when they, when they launched Uniswap, they launched it as a like lean startup. Yeah. So like minimal viable product. Yeah. Right. Boom. That's what it, and, and most, and at the time though, like you couldn't, I mean, obviously they didn't turn the fee on at the time, but like, it was, I think it was a Uniswap V1. I think Uniswap V1 is before V2. Just provide liquidity and just swap on it. So it was it was it was really simplistic at the time, but it, that is like because of the mathematics of how everything works. Like people even now, like I think hexagons understand Uniswap and liquidity farming and everything, and like how liquidity pools work more than 
any other group in crypto. Obviously, at the highest echelons, maybe the biggest whales they know, right? But the average person, most coins, they don't know how any of this shit works. They don't yeah. really, they don't really understand. Like maybe like, yo, if I add Ethereum with this shit coin, it creates yield. Yeah. That's as far as far as they know. They don't know if like you add a certain amount of money. If you if you if you make a certain market order on Uniswap, you double or quadruple, quadruple the price. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question, uh, and sure, again, sure. I'm, I don't want to get you in hot water. I just want to get your, you know, as, as politically savvy as you can answer, kind of answer. Um, do you think that it's better narrative that someone like, as an example, Vitalik Buterin invents, and with the foundation and other contributors to the code, but invents Ethereum, has um, put put their brand and their intellect in creating this thing called Ethereum and then sells some of his creation and then basically causes the tops, if not the market cycle at the top, sells coin, right? So All that's right. one that's one position where you create a product, you sell the product to the marketplace, you play the chart game All because right. of your product and your invention. Or is it different or better or worse that you invent something you and you release it to the public and there's no record or blockchain evidence of sale because that's basically the richard hart is an evil scammer story right versus the altruistic amazing you know, nerd guy that invented ethereum and sells on your head right like which one carries weight in the narrative damn I know, I'll put you on the spot. You're like, oh, how could I answer that? <laughs> like centralization or like I don't have very much because uh, Vitalik only had like 300,000 Ethereum or something like that. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, around there. But he sells the but top he, every he, time but, and he, but, he but makes he, hella money. <laughs> but he really, but he really, but come on, but he really knows. I mean, like he has more than that. He's got far more than that because when he move, makes a move, the foundation sells right. on top of his move. So actually, whether it's direct or it's by proxy, he moves the whole market. Let, let's just say he ever moved on from Ethereum as an example. Right. Let's just say he like, and I'll answer the question. I'm not. And he just on. lived as a hobo on a bench. What no, 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 no. He just moved on. <laughs> <laughs> no, if he just moved on. If he just moved on. I mean, have you seen? Vitalik says, "I'm going to no, no, be Buddhist. I'm going to give away all my coins. I'm going to burn all my coins, or I'm going to give it away to everyone. Which one would you want?" I don't know if you've ever seen Vitalik's dad. <laughs> Vitalik's dad's like a chat. I've seen his photos, but no, yeah, he's a chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally, he's a yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a chat. But um. I mean, Vitalik, because his like his like his name carries so much weight. Like, if Vitalik says, "I make I'm making a new project," yeah, I'm like, yeah. here's my treasure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would just toss. I mean, yeah. it was a blank check. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That that that's the the power. Is that, that your that treasure? Do I get that right now? <laughs> <laughs> here's my five dollar wrench. Where's that five dollar wrench? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but but that's just, that's what that's the kind of social capital you have. I mean, this is what, like he's built up. He's built up, and he's been pretty altruistic in most parts. But he does sell the tops. He makes the tops. The, the, foundation, the, founda does. the foundation. The foundation does. capitalizes every yeah. time. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying is if you have operating capital necessary yeah. to operate an L1, develop a you know a, a merge narrative, you know run. I don't know if the consensus is part of it and all this other stuff. But basically, if you're a founder and you're selling the product to the audience in the market. Okay, that's why you invent uh, you know, the, the steam engine. That's why you invent uh, Ford Motor, Motor Company right. is to sell product to audiences, no. right? Yeah. So no. those audience and consumers. But I, I, I do, you know, I feel for the founder of the product that I care about, which yeah. is Hex. I care about Hex. And when you look at blockchain record and you see somebody that invested into the development of the product, which is both the social, um, you know, uh, our, our group of quote unquote hexagons right. uh, that developed in 2019, the logo and the brand and yeah. the name and, you know, all the stuff in the game theory and things like that, along with Richard. And then somebody paid developers and someone oversaw that, oversaw that, that uh, modeling and that code development and release. So this idea of, you know, someone holds a lot of the coin but never sells and hasn't had any history of selling versus someone that holds a little bit of the coin but dumps the market. It, it's, all, it's all about <laughs> like, like, silicon. All right. There, there's two things here. Character. Mm -hmm. Character. And then we got a, we got a discussion about um, decentralization and, and openness yeah. and 
opaque. Yeah. It, okay. So which one do you want me to go into first? Any of them. Okay. I'll go in. I'll go into the serve uh, your audience. The people uh, that are asking those questions are like, right. what? Who should I follow? Why should I follow the 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 the, the mindset of, now, uh, of Miguel, the, the dollar cost crypto guy? You need both. Now I know that's an answer not a lot of people want to hear, right? But you do. You, I, there is there is a need for both. Now, personally, I would I would if I had to like have a ratio, I'd say. 80% of blockchains should be decentralized and immutable and stuff like that. But there is, you do, this, this is the, the digital world, but it has to interface with the real world. And that's the hiccup there. So you do need a, like, uh, you do need something that is like centralized as well. Now people say that's much bullshit. No, you don't and stuff like that. Eventually, maybe you can get to that point. But here's the other thing. We, we also live in the real world and we don't live in this fucking fairy tale world where like, everyone these people are not going to just give up the power right away so there's always going to be somewhere where they they have control so that's just going to exist but we can rug them enough that 80 percent of it is like they can't fuck with it but there's always going to be that that physical and that 20 percent like like apple is saying if, if apple creates the apple coin right or creates a crypto which might happen one day right to create their own cryptocurrency or maybe tokenize their equity right which will be the the, the minute they're working apple, on a car now i think Don't yeah. they have an apple car now yep like a tesla competitor mm-hmm I'll probably get into it too. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I mean, you're uh, such a maxi. Oh no, you're. I, like, you're I, not, I, I, that's I, not an apple. What is this? What is this laptop? It's stuff? a brawly. It's a brawly. It's a brawly. That's what it is. <laughs> but but so there's so there's that. Okay. So I think decentralization is really cool. But decentralization, it, like we we should we should have already had the, like the fungibility part or the, the like the ability the ability you know i mean not just the fungibility part but the ability to actually hide some of our transactions and have like privacy this is the one like it's both good and bad if you know how to read if you know how to read like um, ether scan and you know how to look at that stuff it's really cool because it gives you all this information most really big players actually don't like it they're like fuck they're, yeah. they're seeing all our big moves as well as influencers don't like it because they're like if they're not truthful they're getting caught with their pants down yeah yeah well, I mean, it, so again, I, I hear that about uh, what is public on the blockchain that you can see, and, and it validates your investment thesis because we are social creatures and we look to our left and we say, what are they doing? We look to our right and we say, what right. are they doing? And then we make our judgment about, should we do that too, right? right. So as an example, uh, you may already know this, I'm sure you do. Um, there was a, con uh, um, uh, it wasn't sure if someone had donated uh, 500 ETH or 100 ETH, I can't remember what it was, to the Highest of Stakes movie. Right. And uh, there was someone that made claim, and they had a Twitter handle, and they, you know, basically the Highest of Stakes producers and directors, they were thanking this Twitter handle for the donation, right? They, right. they were they were assigning the the transaction to a new a new Twitter handle that was claiming to be the person that had given the, the 500, 500 grand. I think yeah. it was like 500 thousand dollars worth. Or maybe it was five hundred ETH at a thousand dollars, whatever it was. It was five hundred grand worth of of uh, value to uh, support the movie uh, development, and uh, that went on for about four or five days. That uh, someone was uh, accepting this praise and congratulation, and the community around Hex was like, "Man, that's so awesome! Someone donated five hundred grand, right?" Yeah. Uh, and then a brand new account uh, that it was formed. Uh, four or five days later came up and said no <laughs> it's me it's not that guy it's me and I don't want uh, and, and the Twitter thread was basically saying I don't want the community to be suckered you know yeah. and, and think that this you know maybe maybe they're gonna get social clout and that social clout later will harm hexagons so I when I saw that thread on Twitter I had um, I, I wanted to have a confirmation so I put a tweet to the account and said hey if you are related to this massive wallet that gave that we, from the blockchain, you could see that the account that had given the five hundred thousand. Yeah, and I said, if you are in control of this particular account, here's a brand new Ethereum address. It has no history whatsoever. I generated it, you know, directly. Yeah, and then I said, send one hex. Just send one hex. Sorry, but it's going to be like an eight dollar transaction cost because Ethereum was expensive at the time, or something, right, right. or twenty bucks, or whatever it was. I said, sorry, you're going to have to pay the Ethereum cost, but send one hex. And at the time, I think it was like worth twenty cents or something. Yeah. And uh, that is the real Godwill, the 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 count. Yeah. Now you were talking about confirmation and privacy on blockchain, so I can see right now that the real Godwill controls over six billion dollars worth of cryptocurrency. Right. He's part of the genesis of Ethereum. He has mm -hmm. a lot of Ethereum. He has you know hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, 
of uh, uh, stable coin. Yep. You know, when Ethereum was hitting its top and topping out in the 4,000 ish range, he was selling like a madman, right? So yeah. he wasn't hurting the hex price. He kept his hex. He keeps his hex. He doesn't sell his hex, but he does uh, dump the market of Ethereum. Yeah. So now he sits in around again. It's the value when I at the time of the transaction where he confirmed his Twitter handle controls that that wallet. Uh, it was worth uh, on paper two billion dollars, and now he's three x that to be worth six billion. Yeah. Right. So that gives me confirmation. I was like, wow, I should probably hold the same thing that he's holding, and All I right. continue to hold hex. So outside of that, now Richard does put out there, and everyone knows you can't run a business if your vendors know what you pay, yep. if your employees know what they're getting versus uh, uh, you know their their neighboring employee. Uh, through public blockchain, you need some level of privacy. And how do you get that, right? Right. So th there's still things that need to be worked out in blockchain, they need to be worked out in government, they need to be worked out in individuals as in entrepreneurs about how to basically participate in the ecosystem of cryptocurrencies. And hopefully that gets developed going forward. So yeah. there's, there's good things of being public, and then there's challenging things about being public to run a business. Right. I mean, myself, I mean, obviously I came from the Litecoin community, so I mean, I liked, I actually liked the, uh, the solution that, you know, like, Charlie Lee and the guys from the Litecoin Foundation kind of came up with, with like using, um, using like, the, it, I wouldn't say it's perfect like privacy. It was kind of like you can choose a privacy, but that also ruins a privacy as well because if, if it's not forcefully, if you don't have 100% privacy, like it's all like all hidden transactions, then um, there's ways to kind of go around it to maybe possibly find out. But basically for the regular consumer, uh, your reg, your regular work, and 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 they still haven't really implemented. It was Mimblewimble. They haven't implemented this just yet, but it's actually ready to go. Is basically you uh, you can on 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 the exchange. There's nothing. They can see everything. The moment they leave the exchange and it goes into a wallet, you can then on a toggle switch turn your wallet completely private, and then then from there be able to pay people. So you could actually have like a public wallet and a private wallet, and no one could see what's in that private wallet. Now, government will hate that. I mean, okay. again, so they're they're anti-cash. Governments around the world are anti-cash. Why? Right. Because it's private. Because it's private. Uh, you know, in and banks probably like and encourage not just the cashless societies, because if you're going to air gap, if you're basically going to have some level of privacy, you're going to in crypto, you're going to send it to a centralized exchange. Right. And then now you're going to resend it outside of the centralized exchange to a new address or whatever you're able to do. Right, so you basically can create an air gap by going to a centralized exchange, and then who knows what that transaction is? Well, the centralized exchange does. You know, right. they they have all of the transactions. They've already passed laws that say that you have to have metadata that transacts, yeah. uh, you know, that that uh, accompanies the transactions. Yeah. And so the exchange that that was kind of like the whole thing. So you could have you could so you have a wallet that you you could just turn on fully private or just keep it just like normal litecoin mm -hmm. now i'm just using this as an example of like what we could do yeah. now it's not it's not fucking perfect so this is kind of like kowtowing to like this is just kind of doing something so it could be a commercial success mm -hmm. but still keep the governments happy from getting crazy and stuff so on the exchanges they could see all the transactions mm -hmm. And if the government needed to, they actually could just open, see the kick whole in your door, kick in the door, and actually see all the transactions. <laughs> and stuff. So, but it, at the very least, it would it would make it hard for a normal person. Yeah. Most people would not be able to see any of your transactions at yeah. all. Now, in the re in the regular world, right, like in stocks and stuff, you know, you really can't see anyone's transactions except Citadel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, they're, like, like if you, if you were like, there's a couple of brokerage houses where like they're the facilitator of all the transactions yep. for something like Robinhood or E Trade and stuff. Yeah. They see all your transactions, so yeah. they can front run you. So they're they're there's that fuck shit. So even yeah. in the stock market, there's a front runner. Oh yeah, it's a front yeah. runner and all and everything. There's right. there's somebody that's in the in the middle. But, uh, but and, people accept it because okay, it's just this person, but everyone else can't see it yeah and then that's the that's the thing and then the people who can see what's going on they have to shut the fuck up because they have they have the ability to see it so it's like okay i'm gonna be able to i'm getting the ability to front run you yeah but i'm not gonna snitch on you for what yeah. you're doing but i'll know well i mean it, what, it, what about monero uh well monero is not very popular in yeah. that in the it's, and it's, it doesn't have volume and the price doesn't change right is right it's it, it is the best state it, i'm sorry forgive me it's the best it is monero is the best privacy coin mm -hmm. bar none but it's a it's it's really difficult to use on a user basis and if you do it wrong you actually could lose your system state and you can lose your wallet and it's it's a clusterfuck yeah. really and like to, to use monero i do think monero is the best privacy coin in the world it really is but 
it, it's it, it's the thing is because the governments are so negative like people are afraid to kind they of they know the them. word monero too government yeah. does they're like oh yeah monero that's really sus yeah. and then because <laughs> of, like so there's something called tornado.cash which basically yeah. is a is a an ethereum coin uh, coin it's, it's just a mixer so imagine like you you throw your like you throw your theorem in a in a giant like um you know the lottery thing when you're when you're playing bingo, oh, yeah, the, bingo the, the, the bingo roller the bingo roller right you take your bingo ball which is like your ethereum you throw your theorem in there you get a receipt you, this receipt gives you custody over one Ethereum. Cool. Yep. And then the, all day, the thing's just mixing around. So now you don't, it takes your Ethereum and splits it up into a, its million pieces, shh, combines it over here, shh, splits it up, combines it over here. After, after a day or so, no, you can't tell, no one can tell whose Ethereum is whose Ethereum. Right. So then you just come back three months later, a month later, whenever you need the Ethereum, you just stick the, I, I'm, I'm making an analogy here, but you stick the ticket in the machine, it'll just give you a ball yeah. of Ethereum and it's randomized and yeah. you, there's no way they can be tracked to you. Yeah, you know what that's called? That's called cash. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, that's the way cash works. Yeah. Like you put cash into the system, you're like, hey, I want a service or a good, you know, and then you take the good and the service as a receipt and then you sell the service or good again and then right. you get cash back. Like, yep. you know, that's, that's part of the like, it's, you know, normal transactions versus washing it's the same thing right you know it, it is the same thing so if you're gonna actually if government's going to um, you know go let's say five years or ten years down the road right. and let's say the cryptocurrencies flourish uh, I, I think that our tax structure should be a uh, flat tax, a, a, yes. a, not even a flat income tax, but just a but flat sir, sales tax. That would tax. destroy the tax industry. But it's a flat sales tax, and yeah. it rewards people equally. You know, you want to buy a Ferrari, buy a Ferrari and pay you know a flat tax. And then someone else wants to buy a Mitsubishi, they pay a flat tax based on that cost. Yeah. You know, so uh, I, I think the solution is a simpler like you know, funding of government and accountability and things like that instead of a full 100% crypto world. Okay. I, I don't think the crypto world will happen. I think we'll still have banks. I think we'll still have loans. I mean, we'll still have risk curve and things like that in the legacy world right. that's available to us. Thank but, you. Yeah. you know, yeah, but... Anyway, <laughs> a lot of topics. Then, I was here for networking and influence. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, well, look, let me just go back to one. So, so I think we just talked about basically... You know the price because a good thing, good a uh, good question on the Monero thing, uh, Travis, and stuff. But I I really do like Mon I really do like Monero. Now a lot of the best privacy technology and some of the stuff being implemented like was is was it was it within Zcash? Yeah. But they just fucking fail. <laughs> yeah. But they create all the like zk rollups, zk yeah. snarks. It, like it all came from fucking. Yeah. It all came from Zcash, and they're doing great things. It's just its coin doesn't do shit. Yeah. So it's like you could have the best tech, and your coin performance is bad. I don't care about you. Yeah. That, that's how people, I mean, so it's like, there is this whole, and this is what people, now this, now this, let me go back to the first point. This is why, uh, just to rub it back in and stuff, this is why people get irked with, with, they get irked with, with, uh, with Richard is because he reminds people of the burden of performance. Now, now Vitalik fits the classical like what's it called? Um, the classical sort of, he fits a really good, like sort of like, um, mold of like autistic genius right even though he's probably he's like he, i mean he is smart probably on the spectrum and stuff but he's not like that socially retarded mm. probably in private he's probably like oh he's probably he might be a little cutthroat possibly mm. and be like no no fuck that no eh, yeah okay and then puts on an wouldn't act that be, wouldn't that be strange like you visit vitalik's house and he's all like gangster rapper yeah what's up motherfucker <laughs> yo what's good bro <laughs> wait let me turn it on <laughs> <laughs> Turns it's it like off. all R. Kelly on people. He's yeah, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> What's up with the Vitalik? Where's his unicorn shirt, man? Come yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> He's bagging bitches in <laughs> the crib. But, but no, but like you got to think about it. Like he probably, he probably does. Like if he's at a nine, he turns it to ten. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, just because it's it benefits him because archetypes. Yeah. Right. So he looks like a classic. Like he, wow, he's so he's such a genius. His his how I mean, he, basically because he looks so he, he looks like it. He's skinny. He's the, this. You remember he, how much hate he got back when Ethereum launched? Or like, how is this nineteen or twenty two year old kid yeah. or whatever he was at the time represent this billion dollar, multi billion dollar, you know, uh, yeah. cryptocurrency? You're like, oh, but he's a genius. He learned Chinese in thirty days. He he yeah. he, he codes and you know with he's, he's his, above with us mortals. Toes. Like he's like you know he's like master Svengali, you know of uh, of tech, you know. Yeah, he he yeah. So it, it's it's that it's that. So he fits he fits some archetype and like and he fits some archetype that like people in VCs and people in big finance said 
that's acceptable to me. Yeah. Also, possibly he's like, oh, he's not threatening, and he's probably like, we can control him possibly because he's so on the spectrum, yeah. maybe, or like, it, we can work with this. Yeah. Right now, Richard Hart, on the other hand, he's <laughs> not fitting the archetype at all right well he now he's saying a lot of the truthful things and he's doing a lot of the right things and he's in the thing that pisses people what 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 it gets like there's a lot of liberal cucks and a lot of these like, like the oh my god it's my own show i wish it was but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of these liberal cucks and a bunch of these people from silicon valley in the traditional space and stuff that they don't like richard saying this shit because look look like the guy like the guys from like going all in or yeah. like the you know um i can't even say it, remember the names and stuff but basically like a lot of the a lot of those like vc founders and stuff that invested in solana and stuff like they they want to keep everything pretty pc and stuff but they're doing the most ruthless fucking evil shit in the background in terms of ripping yeah. off their people and stuff shout out yeah. to mango markets got ripped off 100 million dollars today <laughs> woo, woo. sheesh yeah. sheesh <laughs> but um you know, Solana just keeps taking L's, man. Yes, bro, it's yeah. it's bad. But but why 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 do the people believe it so much? I don't understand because I'm, I'm really what? not part of the Solana like consumer base. No, it's just it's but it's because of VCs yes. that are involved. Hun and because yes. you know Sam Bankman yes. Fried is uh, the head of it. Yes, it's, all 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 of it. It's yeah. just because there's enough big money in there. It's like oh, it's gonna win and stuff. And on top of that, they're they're cashing checks and paying influencers. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're cash and checks, paying influencers, and then what the smart thing they do is like they get some of these influencers in early, so they're super motivated to keep talking about it to get the, to pump their bags. Yeah, yeah, and and that's one of the reasons. Now there is cool stuff going on in there, and there's a bunch of tech in there, and then what they do on top of that too is like, hey, if you chill this and this and this, wow, you imagine you might get a job in this business, or you might get a recommendation. Oh, look at this, like, hey. Thank you so much for talking about our product right here. You know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna recommend you to these other investors that are gonna put money with you. Yeah. I can't give you money. We don't do this here. Yeah. But wink. Thank, like it's 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 like it's like hey, thank you so much for voting on this thing to get to sell all these weapons and stuff like that. And then when and then as soon as you leave the thing, like hey, magically I'm just gonna start hiring you for a hundred thousand dollar fifteen minute speeching engagements. Okay. Like there's a lot oh, of yeah. that. Oh there's, yeah, there's all of that. There's right. a lot of like K rubbing street. rubbing yeah, yeah. of backs and stuff that's going on. Yeah. In the, and, like, but that happens in every industry. But there really is like a thank you, dude. Yeah, yeah. Later on, right? And if he's like, hey, if you want the next seed round for your fucking project, you best. Like and then there is there is a bunch of the things where like like they're launching their own product for the first time, so they're shilling a bunch of shit, and then like they get that backing, and then the reason they get that backing is because they played ball. Yeah, they played ball in the past. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard um, there's a pretty popular on Twitter uh, Twitter Spaces host Mario Narfall. Do you ever listen to his content? Say that again. Mario Narf Narfall. I, I, think I may name. have. I may have. Yeah. Um, and they had maybe like about three or four weeks ago, I was listening to it, and it was um, mostly talking about NFTs, like the launch of NFTs right. and like the contract to hold and like uh, the brand development, things like that. And they were talking about how much, you know, they were being very candid. Everybody was candid. I'm not saying Mario was doing it, but I'm saying that his guests on the show were talking about, uh, you know, on contract, I'm going to hold until it 10 X's or I'm going to hold until it's a certain amount of time and the market's developed. But then they're like, dumping like crazy, man. So oh, yeah. it's like all this quid pro quo kind of stuff. I mean, what's going on right now with, uh, I mean, th there's almost no really, there's not that many people using, um, we talking about Solana, right? Are we yeah, talking? I'm talking about Solana. And okay, I'm talking okay. about just general VC I, I know, shenanigans. <laughs> I figured. You know, I mean, like Richard, Richard doesn't like VC stuff. You know, usually, like yeah. he, he, the the product of Hex got launched without VC. Right. Uh, it was and it was organic to say that you know if the community is going to gravitate to this product narrative, then it will grow, and if it uh, if it uh, dies in the wilderness of crypto, then it will die. Yeah. So right. So the market is what has supported it, and the growth as far as its brand or it's dissemination of how it works and things like that has really been, you know, the community itself. Now, I don't think being a VC is bad or investing in things. If you can get an opportunity, like mm -hmm. if, if you got the opportunity to invest in something that could hundred X, yeah. Huh, yeah, yeah. of course you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course you would. Yeah, yeah. But it's the access to that. Now, now this is why like people, I think a lot of people don't also like Hex or, or didn't like it initially. It was like, why the fuck are you giving all these plebs a chance to, f now mm -hmm. I'm competing with these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. that, that's another oh, Maybe reason. that's part of it too. That's, that's another yeah, yeah, part yeah. of it. It's like, the game's supposed to be rigged to us. Yeah, Why? Yeah. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. You fucking up, son. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you breaking this the code. DeFi, you know, world or whatever. I need to be centralized before yeah. it goes DeFi. Like I need to get my first shake. Bro, first. I have met so many people in the crypto space. Fucking losers. <laughs> fucking losers. <laughs> before or after? What do you Bo mean? Both. What? Is I met a ton of people in the crypto space. Fucking like, oh, this guy got into the coin early. 
He yeah. couldn't trade. He couldn't trade or invest his way out of wet paper bag. Yeah. Oh, but this, but like magically, he got into a fucking seed round. Yeah, yeah. And then like, yeah, you know, I got into into this project early and this project early. Yeah. Early is always best. Oh no, early is always. I best. I mean, again, but... you you realize the first person that crosses that uh, journey, no one's been on there before. Like yeah. this product's never existed. You know, it can be a complete rug. So the the risk of a VC of an angel is basically, you know, nine times out of ten, you're gonna lose all your money. Unless, there's, unless you're really part of this pool that is really launching products serially right. and they have a, a template of how they're doing it. But most of the time in like Silicon Valley stuff, nine times out of 10, you're gonna lose all your money because the founder's idea was front run. The tech didn't, right. didn't stand up. The market you know, said it was too late or too early of a product. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why you would lose your money. But you know, the 10th time, you're at least break even, right? You're like, okay, I broke even. And then like the 30th time you have a 50 X, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, wow. You know, I, I, I speculated early in, in Uber and I'm only going to talk about my Uber uh, speculation, right? right or I right, speculate right. early in Airbnb. And I'm not going to talk about the 20 things that failed. <laughs> I'm talk about the, my home runs, right? My one home run. Yeah. Like, but all the other ones like yeah. freaking failed and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I invested in, well, okay. So I was getting at is you have yeah. risk, you know, when yeah. you're the first, like I heard something the other day and it was about, well, the early people, they get all the coins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the early people are taking all the history, all the, the risk. all of the risk yeah. because you don't have any trended history. You don't have any launch of a, a minimal viable product yet. Right. Like you, you, that VC or angel is is potentially taking the arrows that you would have taken. Yeah. Right. Potentially. Potentially. When it works out, everyone's mad. Yeah. When when it fails and the VC loses the money, nobody cares. Exactly. <laughs> but that's how it's supposed to be anyway. I mean, like you like, but the, I think the the anger from like the public and stuff, and even I, I understand this as well is like, um, they don't have access to the deals mm. now. If 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 everybody had like, hey. If, if let's just say you had to create, a, if you were creating a company, like there's a law basically where like mm -hmm. if you're creating outside of just like a small collective, like you're starting mm -hmm. your team off and then you want to launch. Mm -hmm. Like if there was a way to like do an ICO where like, okay, now we're about to launch an ICO, we actually have to promote it to everybody. Yeah. So let's just say there's a couple of sites that they have to promote on this site and let everybody in. Then from there, um, it would, there would be fairness. Now the thing what happened is and then, then, um, you know, it'd just be a clusterfuck. I mean, the, the thing is, it's not, the thing is, even if it was available to everybody, some people wouldn't hear about it. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be exactly fair. But people just, but people want the shot, yeah. which I, which I understand. But the thing is, if everyone else knew about it, it would set like, we're hey, we're crowdfunding. We may want to crowdfund ten million dollars. Shit, and yeah. like, and the average guy's got like fifteen hundred into it. Yeah, and you're like, and then some guy, and some guy who's got more money is like, well, dude, I can't invest in this stuff because yeah. it's like I can't even get in the deals, or like I I can't put enough money in the deals to make a significant make, it, make an ROI. Yeah, make an ROI that's even worth it and shit, you know. Yeah, so, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I hear that, and, but, and yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's the dream supposedly of uh, even Hex. Hex has had this origin story where you know when it had zero value and it wasn't tradable and it was completely centralized and you know this uh unvetted uh, founder and unvetted community hadn't co you know gravitated to each other um you know that that was probably the best opportunity to get involved yeah and uh it goes through its market cycle of two or three years of existing and uh, i think it's uh you know uh if it's three cents and it had a history of being in the 50s uh, 50 yeah. senses then you have an opportunity potentially of a 15x at right. returning to its all-time high, uh, most recent high, you know, whatever. So, you know, there's, there, you know, I, I hear some of the lamentings is, oh man, I didn't get involved. I should have got in earlier. Okay, well, you just don't like 15 times your money. You don't yeah. like that opportunity. You don't like, you don't like where it could go. No, so they, because people want action now. They're crackheads. <laughs> I mean, they're crackheads, dude. Fuck, the, the average new hexagon is a fucking crackhead. Yeah. I mean, I'm being for real. Yeah. Not the ones I own. The average crackhead. The average crack. I mean, like, hey. I know they're addicted. You know, they're addicted to. Now I'm saying the average the guy that I that I onboarded is a fucking upstanding citizen of, of the metaverse and the, in yeah, the universe yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like. But these other Hexians. Yeah. But these other Pulsicans and it's stuff like. I mean, they're, they're into some fuck shit. Yeah. Like, I mean, and they're going to be taught a lesson at some point, and then eventually they're like, ah, got it. Yeah. Then they age up and then they understand and stuff. Now, the, like, there's there's. Now, I'm gonna say the, I'm not gonna name cryptos or nothing like that, but there's a big argument like, well, the, like everything's down and stuff like this, and why is it performing? Like, fucker, everything is down. Mm -hmm. Even well, like it's fear uh, in the market. Uh, and this is, this is, these are when they say you know when there's blood in the streets, you know those kind of catchphrases yeah. like you know you're investing opportunities when there's blood in the streets. You know I, I have heard uh, George uh, Gammon and yeah. uh, Kiyosaki and uh, Jason. I've heard them all all say when Bitcoin hits ten thousand, that's when I'll be interested again. Like, Richard, 
yeah. yeah. I mean, and they, they say that because of the same sort of investment thesis has worked out for them before in real estate. Yeah. You know, when you had the collapse of 2008 and 2009, there's great deals, yeah. amazing deals, right? And, and, and if you think that, uh, you know, you're going to have a, a stock collapse and you, it never gets back up, you know, the doom and gloom of the zombies coming to get you. Right. Okay, well, you just have to prep and uh, live in a dungeon. But, you know, these things tend to uh, work themselves out because the printing press is endless. The, the Fed, will, in, as long as there is a Fed, as long as they can debase the currency, then they continue to. It's, it's just easier to print more dollars if you have control of the press right. than it is to solicit 300 million people to give you more tax money. Like, it's just easier to, to debase their purchasing power. Right. And when they turn that back on, then... Uh, crypto hyper performs compared to other stocks. Yeah. If you if you relate it to the stock market. As soon as we go risk on crypto, yeah. shits on everything. Now I want to say something because like th th this has been in the chat a while. Gary looking real sharp in these white blazers. Sheesh. I got to get my uh, my uh, disco era. You know, I'm ha I'm having flashbacks of uh, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> <laughs> now I try I, but I try to present myself, you know, like in a way that's uh, respectable and things like that. I, I, there's a lot of people that are, you know. In your social circle, if you're having influence in, in the way that you dress and things like that, then more power to you. Um, yeah. You know, just try to be around where it's a little bit more gravitas. So, so Kyle Kaufman with the five dollar super chat, yeah, big dogs. <laughs> hey, what's up going on? Uh, tea time with the two dollar super chat, and went all hands up, beautiful. As well as Yasuke Fitness did a ten dollar super chat earlier that says, nice. "Hey, thank you so much for the kind words." Shout out the big dogs. Yeah, he's a, yeah. he's a good personality. I hope really, his, his channel flourishes. No, no, definitely is. And so if you guys need online training, hey, hit him up, man. He's a good dude. Yeah. Uh, but um, actually, as a matter of fact, dude, I'm, I'm like, my God, I'm so sore right now. It's like insane. Like, I, <laughs> But you can't complain when you're accountable to a fitness trainer. I, I can't really, complain. You, no. They're not no, I'm accountable to, to myself. No, no, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, people don't know. Like, I was a gym rat. Like, legitimately. Yeah, I, yeah, I used to be a lifter. I, yeah, I used to be a big lifter and stuff. I had some good numbers, too, and stuff. But yeah. um, if I had to do anything over again, I probably would have just specialized in squats versus deadlifts, yeah. possibly, just because I probably would have saved my, my fucking back a little yeah, bit yeah. better. But um, yeah, man. I mean, That's like, the surreal yeah. thing. I mean, like, again, meeting these people in person, it's so strange because we interacted so much in 2018 yeah. or 19, 20, and then, you know, the lockdown of the world where everyone just can do a Zoom chat or something like that. Right. Um, and then, like, meeting you in person, the first right. time I met you in person, I was like, oh, he's, a, he's actually a bigger guy. Like, a, I mean, like, taller than I expected. <laughs> I thought, you're, you know, because I, I had been meeting people like RG3 and <laughs> yeah. kinetics and brazology and things like that. And what, I was like, what, oh, by, what does that well, mean? I, I was just, what, I was just so, saying, like, there's Gary, a scale, what do you mean by that? There's a scale issue. And I was like, scale oh, Scale issue? A, what are we talking about here? I mean, there's I thought, a scale thing that was going on. One person equals one person. And then I finally sir. meet someone like, uh, like you and Hoddle Dog. I was like, holy crap, like, there's really bigger guys in this stuff too <laughs> auto dogs tall for real yeah. auto dogs hella tall yeah, yeah. <laughs> hexo is horrible for the best rg sometimes it's terrible it's funny though because yeah, yeah. i mean again we need memes you know right, like I, right. I, another another person that you you met uh this past week he flew out from uh i don't know where he was from but basically he flew out and he's been making like meme channels you, you met uh, oh alex yeah, yeah alex yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah from yes. crypto was it crypto the, weekly review yeah crypto weekly review. i'm gonna have him on the show at some point when he comes back to uh vegas and stuff but yeah, yeah. he's, so, he's I mean, a great guy he's a he's a funny guy he's intellectual i, I like i like his channel but he shit talks a lot of people and especially oh, wow. hexagons especially richard yeah so like i was like man am i stepping on a landmine by inviting this guy out to las right. vegas to like networking and stuff like that but uh you know i think he had a great time yeah. i think that he was very respectful and uh his, his memes are on point and funny but yeah it's the same sort of thing like uh like, like when you meet someone in person like they can shit talk behind um an avatar and right. they can have a youtube channel and they can think that uh you know think whatever they think of you right but when you meet them in person, it's not that you're smothering with kindness, but you're like, hey, I'm going to hold my frame. Here's my position. Yeah. You don't have to go with full combat gladiator. There are ways that you can convert people to your way of thinking right. if your thinking is sound, right? And you just have to be social calibrated. So I think I had, uh, had a great week, uh, you know, giving him crap. And, I know, uh, right? Shout out to Wolfpack. Oh, the Wolfpack. He's <laughs> the like, Wolfpack. Join, the, join the Wolfpack, you know? But yeah. he's, he's, he's really funny. Um, with his memes and stuff, and that's why I, I think I wanted to introduce him to you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, he was really funny. I mean, I had a great conversation. I mean, we were smoking some good cigars and stuff for a while. So. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to go back, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Um, no, he's he's a great guy and stuff. But like, that's the the power of. I mean, just go back to networking for a second. I mean, like, that's the power of. You really get to know. I mean, you really can like decide if. I mean, like, 
I don't think I've ever met a person that I liked online that I didn't like in person. Mm. But there's people I've met in person before I met them online that I didn't like. Right? Yeah. And that didn't mean I was talking shit about them or anything. I'm like, no, but I was like, wow, they was, he was a lot weirder than I thought. Holy shit. Yeah. Or sometimes you see them on stream and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm iffy about that person. And then you meet him in person. I was like, whoa, he's way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it, uh, sharpness of the mind as well. And like yeah. the persona that you, you have of this image of someone on, on camera or on a YouTube channel or something. I've been playing just like you have people uh, double speed or yep. triple speed. Triple like speed. Michael talked about, Michael Sartain says he, he listens to all of his content at three speed. And that's why he intends to talk fast and his brain yeah. is you know, going fast. Similar with you. I think that your, your, your brain engages you want to know quicker. Something? I don't listen at two speeds. You don't? Nope. How do you have the time? I just would make I can't time. make the time to listen regular speed. I, I, I would just do it. I mean, I just, but I would, it's just I'm very thoughtful about what I'm consuming. So I'm like, I'll listen to this one. And then I get like 20, 30 minutes in and on a lull period in the podcast, pause it. Jump into a different one. Listen 30, 40 minutes. Okay, in. so you do little segments. I, I of do different seg I do segments content. now. But I used to be a power listener where I would just like put it on and listen to the whole thing. Shorts have ruined me. Like, like I'm actually getting You're a little ADD. worried. I, I'm, I, it, it's, I'm actually getting a little worried about shorts actually, Not, because obviously right now there's the big war is YouTube, Google versus TikTok. Yeah. And they're about to start monetizing shorts really soon. And what's going on is next January. AdSense on YouTube is going to get cut in half. And more than likely, I think the AdSense that they're going to move over from, from in January, it's going to be used to pay for shorts. So basically, Google is uh, sacrificing content pay for regular videos and pushing, and pushing that income probably like half of the income to get right pocketing the rest, but taking half the income and probably power um, and then pay, and paying a lot more of the, of the shorts con uh, containers as well as maybe like the clips as well mm -hmm. in order to battle and beat TikTok mm. pretty much. And pretty much with with Chinese with the Chinese collapse and stuff. I mean, maybe they maybe they do knock out TikTok mm. possibly because I'm I'm on see now. I've never downloaded TikTok personally. If if I've ever been on TikTok, I've had like a a third party person doing it for me and stuff. And like, it's I actually I mean it's actually a danger to have TikTok on your phone. I would never if you have TikTok on your phone, you have crypto on your phone. My God. Yeah. Like, don't, yeah. I, I I don't really agree with the stuff on the phone. I, I I don't keep my mortgage uh, or my my title to property and things like that on my phone. You don't. <laughs> no, I don't keep. I have uh, my social. I don't keep I the title pigs, to the I car. Have... I don't keep. Uh, you know, Pink don't slips keep and stuff. Yeah, gold yeah. doubloons, you know, in the back of the phone case. I don't keep all that stuff. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. People carry so much value. They already carry a super super computer with all their stuff on their phone. Right. It's crazy. I mean, this thing has made me so much money. Of like, course. Th this, yeah, you're networking. The re the reason I'm a millionaire. This. Yeah. Right here, this yeah. phone, this phone, yeah. not this phone. You've like, never lived in an yeah. era where you have the most opportunity to become a millionaire from your cell phone. Just being able to call people on the field or yep. be able to take pictures. Like I would just take pictures of plants and just text text somebody with like, "Hey, I, I found this really pretty plants. Have you think I'd be able, like? Do you think I'd be able to plant a couple of them around? I haven't. I like I like uh, like what was it? Like Jordan uh, Jordan Belfort in the movie and stuff, The Wolf of Wall Street and stuff. It's like then you get them with an idea, a way to keep. No, no, that was no, that was uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy's like I was driving a Volvo before I was driving. No, I was driving a Lincoln before I was driving. Ma Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, okay. But then, whew, but then they make some money on paper. They're getting rich on paper. But then you come up with this idea, <laughs> this thing and stuff. You keep them, you keep them money and like and like. So I, so I was like, I have an idea. I thought of a great idea. What if I do? We take, we we put these plants. We put them here, 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 and they're like, Miguel, that's a great idea. Cha Ching. And you know, okay. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. What your story no, no, was that, all that, about. That, I just got lost. But you know, that was a good impression. <laughs> uh, the, Mike, the Matthew McConaughey. No, it story. was just saying like you know, like you you can use you can depending on how you use this this tool. Either you can use it for destruction, yeah. profit, yeah. or or growth. Right. It's. Yeah. This is this is like this is actually like money. Yeah. Really, it's like it's an amplifier. Your network is your net worth. Right. You know. And that that comment just because I used to be a landscaper and I just like it's just because I use what I used the, the thing for yeah. was to communicate with all these customers and then I would like, hey Sarah, I have this great idea. Yeah. I just figured I just found this plant that actually will work in this area right here and like really Miguel, oh my god. Yeah. And then I would do the job and get paid and I'm like yes, and then I would use that money to go buy crypto. Nice. Right. So I was like, okay, I've got a money problem and then like. I need a, I need a, I wanted to get money into the crypto space. Yeah. And then I use this, and then that's where I learned networking and picture and taking things and stuff like that. And then from there, because I've made like a million dollar business in real life, 
in like yeah. in a trades business. Yeah. And then it was like when then once again in the crypto space, pff, it was even easier. Yeah. Because like everyone's moving. How know? did how, so how did you survive these things? And do you still believe in cycles like this four year, three year, For three now. years of bear or whatever is it? Oh, uh, the three the bear no. bear versus the bulls and all this stuff. Right. I mean, do you pay attention to Bitcoin's chart as yeah, your yeah, reference? I, I mean, mostly or what? I I, de I definitely do. I mean, like Bitcoin. I mean, like regardless or not, Bitcoin does rule the market right now still. Yeah. So does it, I mean, Ethereum shit the bed, the market would go down. It would drag Bitcoin down for mm -hmm. sure. But Bitcoin and Ethereum are kings of the market, whether we like it or not, because that's where everyone's watching. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do believe that we're, st we're in a four-year cycles. We, mm -hmm. we are in four-year cycles, but I don't think for long. Mm -hmm. At some point, the, uh, we'll, uh, is, I don't think Bitcoin's at 13 years, uh, 16 years, but at some point we're going to have four four-year cycles mm -hmm. in, in Bitcoin. And after i think we're at 13 or 14 right yeah, now we're like we're 13 years 30, 30 years we're pretty close to hit the four the four of the four cycles and stuff after that like we, we start hitting a certain age where then it changes because it used bitcoin used to run on 30 day cycles 30 day cycles were and then uh, then 60s and then from there it went to like this kind of this larger mac like once it kind of grew up a little bit it becomes like a four-year cycle it could, it could be possible we go into an eight-year cycle hmm. or a 12-year cycle and that actually being what what happens with bitcoin because as the money gets larger and larger and larger and btc is worth trillions of dollars because i've been saying this for a while right there's like almost no, i mean i know it's the beginning of the decade but it's like it's like an, now this number is low in my head but like there's no way in hell that the market cap of crypto is in 10 trillion by the end of the decade mm -hmm. 10 trillion and we're mad like oh this boring piece of shit like 10 trillion it, but does I, that mean because instead of 20,000 coins there's 50,000 coins well, or is, that, is what, that because well, it's still the the bitcoin a, dominance chart what the, do you mean the, there's gonna be bitcoin dominance but i think the bitcoin dominance goes down over time because mm. what's going on is we're every cycle we're creating more useful things the 2017 cycle was 99999 percent bullshit there were yeah. some great things ethereum came out right yeah, yeah. We had the we we had there's a couple of little projects. I mean, even Phantom was created during that time, and like things were were there's good things created during that time that did survive, but most of it was vaporware bullshit. Yeah. So I have a larger I call it my I call it my cycles theory really. Yeah. And I'm trying to find a better name for it just because I'm just trying to like not just I'm trying to trademark it and like actually like make it. Yeah, you can't trade. do too much like uh, Mike Maloney has uh, for the gold people has the wealth cycle stuff. So you gotta be careful about your trademarking. Yeah, yeah, but the, but there there's um there's an amplification. So it's ampl I call it's almost like an amplification. Of, of of character okay we're like so altcoins were really created in 2013 yeah now that was with litecoin and then you had dogecoin later on and then you had then you had like then you had like name coin peer coin world coin dark coin and all these different coins back in the day now the people who made these projects for the first time i mean they were shittier than 2017 icos they were just like this is my coin and maybe a website yeah maybe and then they would be on the coin market cap list and would do really well do these percentages now the people back in the day their mentality was all altcoins are just basically a scratcher to get more bitcoin yeah now i'm, I'm saying the same thing I'm when i came into the cycle that's what i heard all the time right and that's the same thing that i'm attributing to what coins are going to launch on pulse chain for mm -hmm. the most part yeah. they're scratchers to get more pulse x pulse chain p hex p hex they're coming for it they're coming for they're it coming yeah. for your pulse chain your pulse x man warning vet, vet your project you might get mad gains but you're like where am i going to exit to what right. do i want more of right so the so the people who who got into the early cycle 2012 2013 and then whenever it collapsed down to like i think it was in 14 i think with the mountain cox thing or something whenever mm -hmm. that happened and it crashed back down right and the cycle was over um there's people like every cycle there's people who make a shit ton of money or at least experience it like wow i, I saw mount olympus i saw the peak of the pyramid <laughs> my, saw, my my what was it they were refreshing their their app or whatever yeah, yeah. What was it the block folio yeah the block folio they're, yeah. they're like oh look at my block folio and then they cry the next <laughs> i want that screenshot back on <laughs> right because <laughs> remember three weeks ago when my screenshot yeah. was this <laughs> I took a couple screenshots myself. <laughs> and like, then everyone did be like, yo, this is crazy. And then at midnight, you know, three months later, you're looking at it in the middle of the night. You're like, oh yeah, screenshot. This is so beautiful. So, um, okay. So, shit, man, you may lose my train of thought. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Gary. Sorry, it was a little bit of black folio. Map, it, was, it was black folio porn. You're like, you got, oh, oh I got to look at the black folio. Right. So, okay. So the people, so the people who got rich in 2013, or mm -hmm. at least saw like the pinnacle or saw like what, so they, everyone gets indoctrinated to the cycle that they're in, yeah. that they start making a little bit of money or they played around with yeah. the next cycle afterwards is that cycle squared. Okay. Now I haven't heard really anyone say this besides myself and stuff. So, I mean, you're hearing here. So 
basically what, what what's going on is the people the people who from 2013 the reason we got a 2017 is because 2013 was just, was it was, was a squared 13 of 17 so we basically got vaporware squared mm -hmm. for the most part so we now it's night like woo this one's got a this one's got a shitty app with that looks like it was made by a fucking five-year-old but it has an app yeah like syndicator holy shit we can bet in the world the, all like i mean you know it was like pets.com stuff almost yeah. like damn near pitches and stuff but and then this got all the money in the world so it's basically these people basically got money and other people got the idea to start their own projects so guys who made money in 2013 decided to take their money and make their better ponzi or make their better vaporware right and then those people cashed out and then they lost and then the whole market, then eventually, so we had like, you have something called like a VC early investor cycle. That's with 2013. And then you have retail, so whatever these guys create, figure out like, okay, this, like they scratch paper at all. It all goes to shit. And then they take the best ideas from the scratch paper with money that they just got from 2013 into 2017, put it out for the retails, <laughs> slam them, done. This cycle we just had, which I guess is the cycle of 2021, was actually real usable things for the first time. Uniswap, Hex. L1s, even if you think it's bullshit, they worked. Mm. More use. So the next cycle is going to be 2021 squared. So what we did is this is the giant scratch paper. Mm -hmm. Now, there's things that happen during the scratch paper era. Like every era is a little different. So it's ne it's it doesn't they don't they don't copy each other, but they rhyme. Mm -hmm. So the 2021 era, right, is go there's gonna be a 21, a 2021 squared era in the next cycle that we're going into where we're gonna all this stuff's gonna be usable and then they're gonna and then it's gonna be a like we were in the early vc phase the next this cycle coming up is gonna be a retail phase mm. so we're i would say we're probably going into more of a 2017 cycle mm. except a lot of usable things and then more than likely what's going to stop it is basically not enough scalability and it's just going to freeze up and then it's over so that's what i and that's I what that I, little fit you like, just did like, like a little jerk like oh good Tourette's you're defibrillating shit. there. Yeah, yeah. going to break out the defibrillator. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, 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 I hadn't heard about the square uh, element of it. Yeah, because the people who got rich in every cycle, like they, they continue. So I, like, I made a bunch of money. People, I made a bunch of money. Um, there's people that like, fuck, I would have had money if I'd sold it right. I'm not going to fuck it up this time. I'm yeah, going to do it right this time. Like, oh, I didn't, make, I didn't make an ICO last cycle. I didn't make a project last cycle. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to have a sacrifice phase for my token this next cycle. Yeah. Or everyone's got their little like fit. And so when the money comes back, they're all going to try. Yeah. So you get, you get an amplification of the previous cycle. Yeah. And then once that happens, these people go up and then you get a massive burnout. Something you should be having in the regular so, equities markets that yeah. you don't get because people are there to stop it. Except what happens is you have a complete burnout of the whole of the whole business cycle. And then you get a complete the next cycle after that is completely different. Yeah. I mean completely different. And then that be so from what I'm seeing, we're having basically a two cycle thing. We're having early VC, the early adapter, retail, VC, early adapter, retail. So the, the the cycle after whatever the all time whatever the all time high is in end of twenty four or twenty five give or take depending on where the all time high is, then that'll be dead. And then the next cycle could be like twenty twenty seven, twenty twenty eight, twenty twenty nine. That'll be like possibly depend now now this is where you can get economics where like maybe the things actually work now, and then you have a third cycle like a like a wave three, and you get like squared on squared on squared. <laughs> But I'm 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 going way into the future. Into that. So what do you think about like uh, these different L ones? Um, they're total value locked as far as all the things that are built on different L ones. Uh, Ethereum has the longest history. Phantom and other ones have their narratives, right? Polkadot yeah. and so forth. I know you make different content about different L ones and the uh -huh. projects launched launched on them. What are your thoughts when it comes to Pulse Chain um, competing with a Phantom, competing with a Polkadot? I was going to do really well. Yeah, because why, why like, do you say that? Well, okay, here's the main thing. Other than your bias. <laughs> oh, never mind. Forget it. Pass. Uh, pass. Bias. Bias. Pass. What's your, your bias of experience. No. Your bias of, uh, you know, insight. You know, what, 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 do you, what do you think the chances are of the L1 of Pulse Chain, all the products that are, will be built on it? Like, right. I've heard different controversy, like, Richard is this and he can't get these devs, or Richard's so uh, controversial and, and, and why, why would I build on that network instead of this other network, like maybe Polkadot or other examples? Right. So what do you think about, like, its chances of value? It's going to do really well. It's going to do really well. Here, let me tell you why. There's almost no users in all the other chains right now. There's nobody over there? Really? No, 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 no. Nobody, nobody's no, they're, charismatic they're, they're, and uh, controversial and uh, outrageous as... Uh, as our boy Richard? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Like, all right, like, here, here's the main problem for Phantom. There's, there's 
barely a figure. No, I fuck with Phantom Heavy. I think it's going to survive. Its technology is good. Yeah. It it has like the best. I mean, outside of Pulse Swap, Pulse X, which isn't made yet, which mm -hmm. isn't like out yet, mm -hmm. Spooky Swap is probably the best Dex in all of crypto. Okay. Spooky Swap is the best Dex in all of crypto. Period. Okay. I I can say that user like, experience, user experience, ROI. What do you mean? Every, I mean, so okay. User experience. I'm, I'm t talking in terms of user experience, how easy it is to use. There's tons of yield and farming opportunities. Obviously, the token's not going to do shit because it's, we're in the bear market. But it all works. Even even down now, how how down we are right now, you can still earn 50% APR on stuff. Mm. You can you can provide liquidity. You can jump down. There's a real community, except they're not loud. Here's the thing. Here's why they're not loud and engaging Twitter fights all the time. Exactly. Well, they're getting into <laughs> gang fights with Solana and winning. <laughs> The, the dude Solana picked a fight with Phantom, and the Phantom guys have. There's so much developers over there that they literally like mass spent. Well, alleged, why, why do alleged, I have... allegedly, sorry, sorry, allegedly, there are some gang. There, there's gang like there is like Su Wu gang warfare between Solana and Phantom, and like Phantom's clapped that ass a couple times on, uh, for Solana. Why do I have like Ron Burgundy and uh, Anchorman in my mind when I think about these battles between nerds? Oh, you're like, <laughs> they're like all breaking out like nunchucks and uh, battle axes and stuff. Right. You know, what is yeah. what is that? One guy brings a grenade. <laughs> I've got a grenade. <laughs> I've got a trident. <laughs> I've got that scene you know, between the Solana and the Phantom people. Black Panther works 80% of 90% of the time, for like whatever the hell it was. <sighs> Actually, pieces of endangered Black Panther. Ooh, it's spicy. Oh, that's... <laughs> That's pungent. <laughs> pungent, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so so as far as like the pulse chain narrative, yeah, okay, uh, the okay, people that support yeah. pulse chain, the people that have invested, or maybe they speculated, or they sacrificed, whatever word you want to use for okay. it. Like the art, the the potential is who comes in uh, over the next, let's say, two years. Okay, like so here, value. So all right. How can I say this without fucking saying names? Oh my god! Don't drop any names. Don't drop any alpha. Your, your audience doesn't engage your channel for. Alpha. Okay, uh, fuck it. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> it's my channel. Shout out to Travis. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna say it. Okay. One reason why Zen got a lot of, lot of, lot of like hype is because there's nothing fucking going on right now. It's so fucking quiet. Yeah, right it's now. so quiet. You, you, like, right, this is what I'm saying. This is why Hex is actually doing, is, is surviving and isn't dying. Our, our growth of our users, our, the amount of actual staked wallets is actually increasing over time. Yeah. Because we're actually doing, there's actually really people, like, we kept our community. Yeah. It's unusual. The day, like, I mean, it, usually it, they go to the, you know, communities dissipate. They're like, yeah. oh, there's no value here. And, and, and I've been anonymous anyway. I'm not accountable. Now, partly put your hand back, put your hand up here. Right, ready? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we're locked in staked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're locked. I'm we're, stuck we're with this time. for 15 years. Fit, I'm stuck to Gary for 15 I get the, fucking I get the, years. I, I'll count down on the Rolex. You yeah. know, so, <laughs> <laughs> I'll change. I'll change. <laughs> oh, oh, got the yeah. click for the got mic. The, awesome. I know. I'm awesome. Click, click, click. But a part, this, I, I saw Richard say this. Maybe once or twice ever. Yeah, that we're stuck on we're not stuck on a ride, but because because I mean this is why he's saying like this is like this is like Nobel Prize worthy. Like I think this is what he means is like because the average stake length is so long. Yeah, you're you're hyper incentive like you're just incentivized to like you, maybe you could forget about it for a while and then like oh yeah hex hex let me see <laughs> oh it's just actually so okay then yeah you come back to the community. There's the main problem with most tokens. Look at this. All right, the longest staked project in crypto besides hex. Yeah, is curve which is four years yeah four years after that it's liquid driver for two years yeah that's it most vc deals you're locked up when the token launches for a year and then you get dripped out the rest of it after a year or two so it's like that's a three that's a two to three year lockup yeah. to get your tokens yeah the average stake length for hex is seven years and it's growing longer to eight over time so that means we're twice as long as is the most hyper committed people in all of crypto yeah. Like that is like we're so out and far into the lead in terms of like of keep user retention because it's like like maybe you dump all your stack and like oh shit then two three years later you have hex taste coming out and you're like maybe I should care about this again and then that that brings pe that there's there's no claw back to keep community because what happens is once the price dumps and people decide I could push that amount they're just not coming some people don't come back yeah and because of that projects can flatline and die, or they just take a really long time to pump back up and come. I mean, like something like a Litecoin, right? They, they had no clawbacks, they had no way to earn yield, they fucked it up. Um, and then on top of that, there was a whole, sh a whole bunch of bullshit with the actual founder, right? But because of that clawback and stuff like that, like this bull cycle, it's all time high in 2017 was $420. Mm -hmm. It only went to 700 bucks. 
So he did what, like less than a two X. Mm -hmm. That's that's the problem. So it's mm -hmm. like it's almost like it's almost like a zombie coin until something happens, right? So the reason I think Pulse Chain will do so well is because we actually do have users. We we can keep our people around. That's a big thing. Second of all, charismatic leader. The most important thing I always talk about all the time. The box, right? The box. L7 loser. You see that Pepe right there? You see that clock back there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. L7 loser. Yeah. There's there's a reason for that, right? That's the yeah. box. Oh, there he is. There he is. Right there there. He is. Now, the two most important points of the box, right? The two most important points of the box, right? Is community is the most important thing, right? You could have a shit, you could have a coin with no fucking founder. You could have a coin with the founder that hates himself, Jackson Palmer, who hates Dogecoin, but the whole community fucks with it so much and it's a top 10 cryptocurrency. Done. That's how important community is. All right. Second, who's the team or the charismatic leader? We have a charismatic leader, whether you hate him or not. He's loud and proud and in charge or whatever, right? But he's out here doing what is pushing himself out. Most of their founders are not pushed. They're, they're quietly like, I'll give, I'll give Charles Hopkins some credit. The fucker just doesn't leave. He just, he's just like, I'm going to keep churning out videos. I'm still here. Hey, you guys, I'm in moccasins right now in the middle of the river. This is my rooster and stuff. Here's my giant cock, you guys. My falcon. Here's my falcon. Here's my, uh, I mean, like the funniest shit I ever saw him do was like, he was in the middle of the Gobi Desert. Yes. In, in Mongolia, drinking fucking fermented, uh, what was it? Goat's Ferme milk goat's or something. Goat's milk getting shit-faced <laughs> with, the, with the Mongolians. That was pretty cool. But even for that community... He's their Chad. He's their cool dude. Like he's not, Charles isn't abandon us, yeah. right? Yeah. People need a safety. They line. need they a figurehead. Exactly. Because we're human beings and we want a tribal leader. Yeah. You can, no, no. We, we, we're we gonna, want to decentralize everything. We're going to have kumbaya and socialism and communism and no one's going to have any, any, any uh, advantage over another person. Except we want a leader. Right. We want a leader, right? <laughs> and no, and, he, and watch this shit. Like. We want a leader so bad, and we like we're also a very hyper religious people. Yeah, and just naturally, we'll make we'll make religions about spiritual nature. Oh my crystals. God, crystal! Oh, I literally want to say crystals. Yeah, crystals and stuff like that. like. Well, if if like literally, if like let's say. Sorry, go, you lost your crystal audience. They yeah. just quit. They, oh, I'm sorry. They're man. all out. They're like, I'm gonna get charged in the moonlight. I'm not gonna listen to this dollar cost guy no more. That's okay. <laughs> but um, so. It, people need their sort of thing so this is something that i had to talk to rollo rollo tomasi quite a lot about because i was trying to like because i was trying to explain to him like there's so many godless people in this earth now now that's okay that's fine you don't mm -hmm. atheists and stuff but because people have a lot of their money and income in going like dollar cost averaging into a coin as well as putting money into it into the token like of a large amount of their wealth and stuff yeah and then that does multiples what ends up happening is because you have all your money into it you end up making a social circle and then almost a halfway cult religion. So we're like a lot of people are godless people who then are making religions out of their coins mm -hmm. because all their money's in there. Right. That's what's happening. Because humans are naturally like religious. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, I agree. And again, we'll find something, even if we're a scientist, you're like science becomes your religion. Even right. if you're, uh, you know, involved with something that has nothing to do with uh, yeah. uh, some... What? What is Story. it? Shout out to all my Doge family. Shout out Cardano gang. Shout out Hex baby. Yeah, yeah, Shoo, tribes. It? Shout out the, it's tribes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Suwu, my gang again versus your gang and shit because your gang's going to die because it's, it's your, the Reese. Yeah. Because if I just, if I defeat your tribe, then I get to take all the DCAers and all the people from your tribe into my tribe. And then, and then, and then the, 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 the number goes up. And then yeah. when the number goes up, I happy. And because I happy, like good. <laughs> Cause I happy, I like good. I love how you break it down. In very no, that, that's terms. what it is. Like that's yeah. that. Like at the like, if people put all these met, these huge words and all these other things. At the end of the day, is like I want people because price go up. If price go up, I have money, and if I have money, I get pussy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if I and if I have girl, then I happy. Or maybe I have good boyfriend, and then I happy. Or if I have nice car, then I go fast. <laughs> Or like, if I have a nice car, people think I'm cool. Is that cool. in a pamphlet? Do you guys? Uh, do oh you yeah, I give, them out, I, give them, I give them out all the time. I give them all the time. <laughs> but that's what that's what people are doing, dude. This coffee's got me hyped right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it though. Yeah, I mean, and and I, I do agree with you about that. People are seeking tribe. They're seeking some kind of leader. You know, eighty percent right. of the population. There's not. There's not a problem with 80% of the people being followers. Right. You know, it, it really isn't. As long as they have uh, wellness in their heart and they right. feel fine, you know, and they're not like depressed over not you know, the, living the life that they choose. But you know, it is it is something to be out there. Um, we were talking about uh, influence and networking earlier, yeah. and part of it is uh, being bold, so bold. Be so bold as to um, you know explain an investment thesis to yourself. Right. 
uh, you know, so to speak, uh, eat your own dog food is what they like to say. He's like, oh, if I believe in this, I'm going to consume it myself. So right. your investment thesis and then broadcast it, you know, so all right, that's, that's, that's part of our story today. <laughs> I mean, the guy who ran the club Laura says, I believe in my product so much. You can shoot me with a 45. Yeah. Like, he's ah. got it on video. Yeah. Yeah. You like, didn't expect it. <laughs> he would just, he would just go to what a police department. He's like, Hey man, shoot me with that shit. Bah! And like, he was like, I thought that was a breaking bad episode or something. <laughs> I mean, it's been used, but it's, he, he, the, the guy who created club Laura legitimately did that. Yeah. 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 He went to police departments all over, I think all over the United States and just had people shoot him and stuff. He broke ribs that way. <laughs> But he dedicated. He's like, yo, this shit. We're, I'm, I'm going to close the sale. You're going to yeah. buy my stuff. You're going to shoot me with a 45, and I'm not going to die. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Damn. I mean, that's it. Hey, yeah. that works. I think, I think they sell armored cars that way too. They'll like unload an AK-47 on you. And, you know, they're like sit in the driver's seat, uh, <laughs> and you see the shield, like the windshield, like all shattering in front of you. You're like, yeah, I'm alive. Right. <laughs> Now I think the test should be like, can it handle a fifty caliber bread at like sniper oh, rifle? That's what it, if you can handle one of those. I all right, know, all right. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I hope I never need armor car. Yeah. But anyway, me neither. Well, who knows? Maybe when I'm president. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, you know, I think you have that political possibility. Like, yeah. if it's something that you really want to go through the ringer, so to speak, of being a politician, and, and I can see it. I, I think you have the networking skills, and I think you have the the uh you know the good good feels from people yeah. that support you i mean i've been saying this for a long time we need to annex canada <laughs> you're going to go right to territorial acquisition you're I like mean, we're going to annex this uh the great north make america great again i mean <laughs> make, what, make, no, expanding make, yeah make, expanding yeah i'm gonna say make north america great again <laughs> make north america <laughs> we're gonna rename it's no longer gonna be usa yeah. it's just gonna be like uh, when, america when, when i take over and stuff i'm gonna end up having i'm gonna con everything Everything in the North American uh, sector, Cuba, all the island nations, all the way down to Mexico, all the way down to Panama. Empire. Empire. United <laughs> Nations of America. <laughs> and right. Greenland. I'll take it by force. All right. Uh, I, I, at first, I was feeling really good about this uh, support for, uh, for your ambition. <laughs> now, now I'm going to feel a little bit Genghis Khan-ish. Uh, something's going on here. <laughs> no. I've got to expand the population of the United States so we can, so we can be a larger por portion of the whole GDP and the, the whole population of the world. Okay, okay, okay. I know I'm going a little off. The Knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all jokes, man. But um, yeah, president of Hexaco, that's correct. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. So any questions from the audience? Of yeah, of course. Anything that they, they have uh, beat us? Please, you guys, if you guys have any questions for my guests and stuff, please put it in the chat now, man. But um, yeah, man, please join the Citadel and stuff. If you want a place where you can talk crypto and stuff, the, the art has been throwing up the link right there, cultivatecrypto.com slash product slash the Citadel. And it's the best place to kind of talk to crypto in a safe space, as well as like we bring, we give you guys strategies and stuff of, or ways to kind of climb up the Citadel. I mean, this is like the classic meme of like, you know, upwards mobility, Yeah. And, but you can do it in the crypto space. Like you, you, over time, you can dollar cost average in these assets. Right now, I really believe that we, we may have, we maybe have like 2.5% of people actually investing in crypto legitimately. Mm. And because of the bear market, we're probably at a quarter of a percent mm. active, mm -hmm. active users right now. Yeah. So obviously when the bull market starts, maybe this next bull market, we might go to 10%, mm, Wow. which is a lot, which is quite a lot. That's a four, a four X in the number of users. And that's a significant amount of capital. Yeah. I think because this next cycle is going to be more retail. So you're going to, you're, it's like everyone, you're going to, everyone, you, it's not going to be everyone talking about crypto, but you're going to walk around in Uber and be like, oh my God, there's crypto, crypto, this crypto, that like, oh, I'm in this coin. Just like for, for like four months there, everyone was talking about Dogecoin. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have that this next cycle and then it's going to crash. Of course. Right, and then after that, like the, it might actually be two and a half percent actually actively using crypto, and that's a lot of people. Right, that's a that's a, that's, that's a good, I mean, it might be over a hundred million people actively because like th there was a report recently that DeFi actually had like ten million maximum actual users, mm. which if you in the grand scale of things, that's not that much. Is that is that like where you can just make a wallet, you can mint something, and no, it's, that's it's real pe people? Pe people actually, mean? people actual people doing transactions on a regular basis, doing this, providing liquidity, analysis. like analysis okay. across all chains. It's looking like it's ten million active users. Okay. Now there's people that just a one time purchase, and yeah. I, w I wouldn't. They're not counting, but like active users of DeFi, ten million. That's not that's that many. Interesting, because I, I I question again. I'm not a cynic. That probably is an accurate number, and they probably have done analysis to think about these things. Like if you hold one particular coin and it's a certain type of wallet and you make a transaction and then you have a different kind of coin, maybe it's on the Ethereum network and it's a uh, yeah. MetaMask and okay. you have a different kind of coin, you know, so it's the Bitcoin wallet. Like yeah. how do you know it's not the same person? 
right that has three types of problems and it's it's very, it's possible you're right yeah. it, it could it could be that maybe we were like we're we're talking unless about tracking your IP or something yeah i mean unless oof oof <laughs> oof oof, oof, oof. <sighs> on, but it, on your but centralized possibly, exchange it, but it could be possible you're right it could be just a million people actively using it yeah but then the whole you could imagine if, if it is really a million just a million people actively using DeFi right now yeah, yeah. look how look how much money we've created and like yeah. the wealth effect with a yeah. million active users. what's the perceived thing it goes to the the coin market cap uh uh for yeah. for, for the whole network like right. is it a trillion is it two trillion is it yeah, four I mean, trillion I mean, where's the number and, and i'm not saying it's not it is marketing in your brain because you say this look at how much money is locked up locked right. up in in uh in DeFi. but then you um you say uh you know what moves the price you know is it more users is it more capital what moves the price i mean it's it's all of it but it's also high like somebody asked me this before like well if the vcs and and all the rich people have all the money like like why do things go so crazy when when retail is is in full mania mm -hmm. right let's well, because the retail when they usually get full mania they go all in basically yeah. we're like vc we're emotion so, amplified you know. most people <laughs> like don't i've go got to get in or i've got to get out there's right. no there's no measured consideration about dollar cost averaging in dollar cost averaging out see what i did there because the, yeah well, i know i saw it because <laughs> the guys who really have money like every let's just i'm being this is kind of this is i'm pulling this around mass but people who really have a lot a lot of money in their vc investing into crypto yeah. space they're probably allocating at most 10% of their wealth. Yeah. And then what they're doing is just setting up shops and then they ex start extracting money from the, the, the user base. Yeah. That's what happened. Or like, through, you know, maybe not, not in a bad way, but just like they're providing a service and then... They well, they exit to BVC and found the next thing. Right. You know, they are founding the next thing. They, yeah. are, they are the pioneer right. to a degree, you know, in a positive light, I'm framing, framing it, that they're the risk taker on the next thing. Right. Right. Whereas you, you may, as a follower, need that first leader, that first mover. Right. So we finally got some questions right now. Uh, Anime Red Pill. How would you network with high value people as a younger guy, 20 years old, Gary? I think you need, for me, I've said this on other content uh, providing platforms and stuff like that. It has been, for me, we're speaking English. Most of the yeah. people in your audience are speaking English, right? right? We're not speaking Chinese. So uh, maybe it would yeah. be good to speak Chinese in the future. Right. But what I'm getting at is there's a language that's being received by the audience because we're speaking that. And, and that, that understanding is passed. Uh, I think of real estate as a universal language. I think mm. of real estate as a universal language. If you make a lot of money in um, uh, flipping cars, like a uh, Turo business, air, uh, some other kind of business, you invent a product, you uh, make good in crypto, uh, you should understand real estate. Right. It helps you in your vocabulary, it helps you in your network. So a young person understanding the mechanisms of whatever country you're involved in, like in the United States, we're very leveraged and we use uh, credit scores and we use uh, FICO and things like that for a bank to underwrite your purchase if you're gonna use leverage and not buy flat out cash. Yeah. Um, if you're in Colombia, as an example, they don't really use credit. Like there's 96% of the real estate is owned either outright or you know, by a family, you no, know, no promissory notes or nothing. So it's just, it's, it's just rare. cash. It's just well, cash. It's, well, the interest rate is high. The qualifications right. are very difficult in general, uh, you know, for banks to lend, and uh, it's just not a leveraged society. They don't use credit cards to the same degree that the United States does. Right. They don't finance their cars to the same degree. So actually, when you have like a financial crash uh, in the finance in, in in the United States, especially if that were to happen, there's so much leverage in the system that needs to come out. So in general, what it, the question from the young person was, how do I network with people that have high net worth? Right. Understand the language that they're speaking. Mm. Understand their entrepreneurial terminology. Understand their real estate investment thesis. Understand what a cap rate means. You so, know. so pick a sector. Pick, and then, pick a and, section and, and understand, the, understand the terminology and the vocabulary, at right. least. Because then when you have a, 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 a polite conversation at a wedding or something like that, and you're, you're seated at a table of strangers, you can bridge, right? They're going to say something, you're going to say something, you're going to have an icebreaker. It's very much, and it's also in the red pill and in the pickup uh, artist communities. Right. Like you need to go through rejection so you understand what the, why did you get rejected? Like what, what was the part of the conversation that became a stumbling block? What was the word that they used or the pushback or reject, um, you know, something along those lines. Right. So understand the vocabulary. I think, no, I think that's a great no, that's a great answer for that. And then also you frame yourself very well. Like you, when you're in an environment of other 
business leaders and successful yeah. people, you tend to dress differently. Yes. You tend to, right? If you're going to go play baseball, you're probably going to play a baseball outfit because you're playing baseball. Yeah. If you're going to be around other people of influence or wealth, just, wear, just wear a suit jacket. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I look, I'm not even joking. Rollo called me the other day. Uh, oh, called me my leisure God. suit. He told me this morning leisure too. suit Larry. Yeah, he He's like, me. Gary, your leisure suit Larry. I was like, hey, man, it's like somebody's got to play the role. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but that's what Rollo actually said this to me on a call. He said, "But that's what I really appreciate about Gary is that he like he knows that about himself, or he like he like he'll play along with that and stuff. But he doesn't let that like affect him no. or nothing. He's like oh, he'll lean into it, and then but that's Gary. And then there's 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 something actually like like cool with like someone that's like that's that's what I am or that's who it. I am. You own it. Yeah. 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 Richard yeah. owns who he is. Yeah, like, yeah, he does. And it's the same sort of thing. Sometimes he's brash about it and he pushes back a little bit, but he he knows his flaws." He highlights his flaws. Uh, he knows his where he, he feels he wins. And, uh, and I, I'm not overly confident in that way. I still have my uh, anxieties and things like that. I'm still right. a human being. I still you know, I get sensitive if someone says something you know, um, yeah. that, that hurts my feelings, so to speak. But uh, you just need to be bold you know, and, and get out there. Um, it builds confidence. Yep. So there you go, man. Anime red pill. So, okay, the next question. Art Sabe Angelo. Question. What is funding Jim's opinion on dormant capital now that there is so much uncertainty? Dormant capital, like, uh, I, like I had this video that I put out in the past and it, it was about dormant capital and I particularly was talking about a Corvette that I wasn't driving. It was a 1962 Corvette that was worth around 75 or 80,000. Um, and I think I had driven it maybe six months uh, prior. I was traveling a constant uh, all the time. I wasn't even in California that often where the car was located. And uh, I saw the opportunity inside of crypto and the market was uh, starting to really heat up in its last cycle. Right. Once Uniswap became available to us and uh, things like that, I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really not using that value. This is before the big payday. Oh, OK. okay. So right got before it, big it. payday. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm really not using that value. If I if I put it on the marketplace and try to extract the full fair market value, it may take two to three or four months to find the buyer that's looking for a 1962 Corvette, right? That, you know, even if they knock off a little bit of a percentage of what the blue book says, that, you know, to realize $70,000 uh, on a sale would right. take me three to four months. But then I saw an opportunity when it came to, and how you helped me so much yeah. also with, uh, re, with our staking ladders yeah. and things like that. Um, I was like, here, I, I need to participate in this further and I need to put more capital into the system. And I actually did advertising on Craigslist and on eBay and things like that and says, you know, I will accept uh, 45,000 if it's uh, in the form of hex, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the dollar value of what a hex was worth. If, yeah, if you yeah. pay me in hex, I will accept. Uh, that was a good trade. At the time. I, I think it was the other way around. I think it was like 45,000 if it was cash, it was like 43,000 if they paid me in Ethereum and it was like 40,000 or 42,000 if they paid me in Hex. Right. Because I was trying to get them to look at Hex to in order to once, get the deal. So you know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did the same thing with real estate. My tenants, I had, I had like six or seven tenants and, and you know, I said, hey, you can get a discount on your rent if you pay me in Hex. But otherwise you pay, <laughs> you pay the full, you pay the full fare. Right. So then that made them go look at how to get Hex to get the three or $400 per month of discount. That is so. He imagine right. you have your tenants like, all right. I think the hex price is going to do this time right now. I think. I'm yeah. gonna, Gary, can I pay you the? Can I pay you rent early? Hey, this hey, month? Yeah. hey, they were doing it, man. Because yeah. like four or five months, we're like, man, this guy's an idiot. Like, you know, he's accepting this hex thing, and, and I'm getting a five hundred dollar discount off of my rent right. because I'm paying. I'm going. They were jumping through the hoops to go to Coinbase and trade into okay, hex right. so that they could yeah, basically yeah. pay me in hex, right? And then uh, they they noticed on their own that. Uh, each, uh, each time the, the rent was due each month, uh, they were giving me f less hex per time. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. Like the price is going up on this hex thing. Like, can I just pay you? Can I just go back to paying you like full rent and cash? I don't want to pay you hex anymore. <laughs> like, and then they started becoming holders, right? Damn, that's so base, dude. Holy yeah. shit. Because like, I'm not sure if they changed it, but back in the day, right, if you're paying on uh, Uniswap or if you're using a mobile wallet or mm -hmm. you're using on the MetaMask wallet, it would show like it shows the same amount of coins in the transaction, but the dollar it actually updates the dollar amount. So imagine like you five thousand dollars in rent, and then mm. a month later six thousand three hundred. Yeah, you're like wait wait wait. Like, wait I, a minute, I didn't, I didn't pay that in rent. Yeah, and, and, and like, th that was the effect. So they were starting to see that, all right. And so I, I thought about it the same thing when we were talking about dormant capital. I thought about the same thing for myself. I was like, okay, 
I've got this capital, which is locked up in the form of a car, classic car. Yeah. I can sell that capital and I can maybe get 70 grand out of it if I wait three or four months. Right. But I had this particular event that was coming up that I thought there was going to be a surge in the price of Hex specifically. I was like, let me go ahead and get involved. And I made the sale. A guy came up from Los Angeles and, you know, he asked me all kinds of questions about Hex and Ethereum as well. Basically, he wrote a check and then I converted that. And now that conversion of the dormant capital into a highly speculative instrument of hex at the time is worth something like 2.7 million something like that so like nice. you know my forty thousand dollars so, so i short sold something that was worth 70 for 40 yeah. 45 quick, or quick whatever. liquidity basically. yeah so i was like yeah. let me get a sale now liquidate fast and, yeah. yeah and then i speculated with that money it was already dormant like yeah. if it had caught on fire if it burned up or whatever it would have been lost money anyway right so i just saw it as dormant capital and i said let me put it into a speculative instrument let, let me tell you a story. All right. Actually, the car that we that I have outside, right? I'll mm -hmm. show it to you. I was going to sell that car for Hex. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it at the time. I regret that. <laughs> I regret that. Like, you look at it on the calendar, you're like, remember this day when I almost yeah. committed to selling this thing? I actually, what, yeah. I, had, I mean, I was like, screw it. I have my work truck. I can just move around in my work truck. Yeah. And then, like, I'll just go in my girl's car or something yeah. like that. Or, or something like that. And I'm yeah. like, I'll just ride around like that or something like that. And, like... And at the, I was just like, I would have sold it for like, maybe like, what are then 15 extra, 15, $18,000 at the time. Yeah. I can't even, I don't even want to think of the number. Well, I mean, it, yeah. experts in the field, they have all kinds of book and content, yeah. uh, you know, decades worth of content that they've generated. Like, I think even uh, uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about yeah, this yeah. all the time, is about, you know, that he is a debtor. He highlights the fact that he buys assets, he takes out debt against the asset, but those are performing assets because it tends to be rent, rental real right. estate. Right, it know? has an income. Or so it, it has performs. a cash flow, yeah. right? So he cares about cash flow, but he actually is probably one of the biggest debtors that we, we know personally. Like yeah. you know him personally, I know him personally. And uh, same sort of thing, you know, he may has a, maybe has, I don't know how many billions of dollars worth of debt. Yeah, um, but he's also living a pretty rich lifestyle. I think he changes out a jet every, uh, you know, yeah, every, every, year every or two. once in a while and stuff. Yeah, he he, he just he just calls up the office he's like, "Can I get this new Ferrari?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big deal for him. Yeah. Ken McElroy says like, "Yeah, he only calls me when he wants a new Ferrari." Yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and, he, and they do that leverage game with real estate. I heard uh, yeah. your boy um, uh, Justin Waller. Yeah, like, Justin. Yeah, a lot of content. I was just I was just really diving into a lot of his content re recently of uh, his real estate deal flows. Yeah. Uh, with like the war room. I think he does this stuff with the war room and stuff. Oh, and no, it, yeah. Shout out to the war room. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're doing, uh, and Justin was, I saw this short because I've been scrolling through Instagram like crazy looking at your content too. And uh, Justin just had posted something today and it was about that, you know, the deal flow about, you know, you need to, that's what goes back to what I was saying earlier about your networking ability. You need to understand some of this terminology, even if you're not going to be a real estate mogul, you need to understand the, the language. Right. Uh, even if you're not going to be into classic cars or, you know, Ferraris and things like that, I think you need to understand what I, is attractive. I, right. I'm not in the watch game. I don't play the watch game, right. but I, I recognize the brands and I'm right. around people that are in the watch game constantly. I mean, this is something that I learned from Richard and stuff is just you want you want to get things that people recognize that's mm -hmm. easily recognizable like like uh, a Richard Mill right even though it's, it looks nice and stuff and people some like like it it does not have the history of mm -hmm. a Rolex mm -hmm. I will always be able to sell this to somebody at some point mm -hmm. and stuff even right now after the market's crashed I'm still like ten thousand dollars in profit on this watch yeah, yeah. even yeah. on even on this watch and, and this is instantly identifiable to people that are not yes. watch people like I'm right. not a watch person but I'm like oh yeah everyone and a Richard Rolex. Mill I wouldn't yeah. have known that it wasn't from Lego uh, it could have been like a play school yeah. kind of I, I don't know that Richard Mill brand as much right. as I know the I mean it, I mean Richard I mean, not to shit on Richard Mills and stuff like that but like I mean they, <laughs> I'm they, not trying to shit on it's a half a million dollar watch, watch but I but to me as an outsider the brand doesn't punch to me as right. an outsider right. except for other people that say that's very expensive i right. go oh, okay now i know right it's it's sort of like silent wealth yeah. or like secret wealth but then then richard sort of says sure like the thing is is those people like that's a way to impress those kind of people maybe yeah. but the problem is is like if you actually hang out with people that have the much money they don't give a fuck they already have they already have mm. they already have money already yeah it's more of like what they're in what they're impressed by is like yo let's go do something like that or the only thing you can impress them with is maybe like a larger yacht yeah that's about it really because yeah. anyone because like th there's this whole level of money that like once you get to a couple a hundred million to like a, the, the difference between like a hundred million and a billion is basically you got a better plane and you got a better yacht yeah lifestyle wise that's yeah. about it that's and like, you're eating and, pretty much the same food yeah. as if your work if your net worth is like five million to ten million you're pretty much affording any restaurant that you choose yeah, you're yeah. pretty much staying in any hotel that you choose 
I mean, it, you're not really that much different. Now, the scale of your house and how brash you want to be about your, your wealth display right. might be different. But there's also very, like, again, Silicon Valley has billionaires basically all, all over the place, you know, at cafes and things like that. Yeah. And it's, they're not like flash and yeah. they're not showing their, their wealth. They just basically have a stock portfolio that, 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 that gives them really their wealth. Well. Now, there's pros and cons to that. Yeah. There really is pros and cons to yeah. that because if you're, if now the average person is very highly impressed by these things mm -hmm. because they, they don't have that and they really, they really want to achieve that. Mm -hmm. But a really rich person's like, look at this asshole. Fucking yeah. If, but, That's part of the Silicon Valley yeah. curse in right. some ways. Yeah. But for the most, now if you got a product, they're the business, most socialist capitalist that I know. <laughs> Everybody right. needs to wear their uniform of, uh, you know, flip flops or whatever. Now you have to play that game if you have to gather capital. So it, it all depends on where you gather your money or you, where you gather your capital from. Yeah. Now it, it, what I'm doing, right, is obviously I'm trying to, I'm trying to gain social capital, which means mass amount of people. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to be like, fucking like, like, oh, please Silicon Valley. Oh, please big investor and invest with me. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. Right. But there's people who like have companies that they have to be like sucking dick up to somebody just to get like a million, a couple million dollars, mm -hmm. right? Because that that's their crowdsource and stuff. So if you have a bit, if you have a business where you're selling like a five dollar product or something like that, you're better off actually being loud or something like that to like Mr. McMahon walking down the fucking thing like this. So you're able to get tons <laughs> of people in because you 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 want volume and, you, and that's what you're gonna sell. Yeah. So or you either you're going for clout, you're selling something to a certain amount of people and that that's your base, and so you want to be loud versus you know, there's silent, there's silent wealth and they already, they only do deals with certain types of people and it's, it's a very small group. So they gonna, they're kind of trying to impress that small little group. Yeah. Well, they, they, there's two ways to become wealthy. One is, uh, sell your product or service to yeah. the classes, which are basically the wealthy people. Right. And you just have, you, you know, like you produce Maybach and, uh, you know, Mercedes, uh, subset brand of $300,000 car. Right. Yeah. Or you're selling to the masses, which is like uh, you're going to produce the Camry and the you know the the regular uh, transportation car, right? Consumer, right? consumer, consumer, consumer staples, the staples. volume, yeah, yeah. the volume cars, the volumes, right? So yeah, you know, you're you're always going to be you're going to do it small, high volume, small transaction cost, yeah, or low volume, high transaction cost, right? I would say the other one's harder to do the volume. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty powerful once you do it. Yeah. Once you do it and stuff like that. I mean, like, I remember, like, this is so, like, weird. Like, when, Ju like, a lot of the aristocrats in Rome were pissed off at Julius Caesar because basically he had the love of the plebeians. Mm. Right. And he was like, oh, look at this. He's placating to the plebeians. Like, oh my God. Because this is where this pleb comes from? Pleb, this is yeah, the pleb from, 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 the, from yeah. uh, Caesar? From, from all, yeah, it's, it's Rome. Yeah, it's from the Rome. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. The plebeians and stuff. They were like, basically. What about the, the Praetorians? I thought those were the tough guys, you know, like in the gladiator. Praetorians! The, the Praetorian guard. Well, that's just a royal guard or something like that. Yeah. I mean, there's the, I the mean, plebeians they, in the Praetorian battle. Right, okay. right. So, okay, let me go to another question. Uh, Kyle Kaufman, I have an auction for boards autographed by me and Thrasher Skateboarder of the nice. Year. Kyle Walker. Damn, cool. To raise Kyle, money. For Kyle Kaufman has got his movie that he's released. It's Geo, I think. G E O. Yeah. And, I saw uh, the trailer for it. Yeah, 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 yeah and we yeah. were just uh, texting. I think he's trying to go to different film festivals, and he's done a lot as far as his. Uh, he's a hardworking branding. guy, man. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's a good dude. He's he's got a good personality. His uh, his tweet game is on point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his uh, his uh, mediating between um, different factions of the hex community. Yeah. I think he's a great mediator. <laughs> no, I think he he's an awesome person because yeah. he, he's connecting Hollywood and sort of that whole actor sort of yeah. sphere. And that's something that I can't do, you can't do. Yeah. And he and he's got his niche lane of like how to onboard, branch out, and kind yeah. of get people. That, that's what I'm saying is like everyone does like their niche. He, he's and he's a great guy too, and he's creating some really good films. But just to finish his question, to raise money for this uh, traumatic brain injury foundation in promo for the recent film, any advice for scaling it? Uh, scaling his marketing message. His marketing of, message for of the raising money for TBI. Yeah, for the for the auction boards. Um, uh, yeah, you can. Again, there's people outside. I know he's part of the crypto communities and yeah. things like that. And there's different networks that could probably be tapped. Um, I, I haven't thought about it specifically, but I have his, his Twitter, and I'll go through his Twitter. Um, you know, people like uh, Ken McElroy, they have a charity. Uh, a certain percentage of the sales from it. he has like 250 person employee uh, 250 employees and uh, a percentage of their real estate portfolio goes specifically they choose a charity every year so maybe i could reach out to him there's other people that again they, they have a percentage of uh, of their wealth that they put toward philanthropy maybe we can tap some people 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll definitely look into it. And some we'll, we'll talk about it over dinner right now in a minute yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, no. So definitely hit us up, man. But um, yeah, we'll come up with a with strategy. <laughs> We're pretty good at that. So uh, let me see. Okay, this actually a money printer. Is Funny Jim in any other ecosystems? Um, so I explored different asset classes. And when it comes to real estate, I tend to say, okay, I want to have a four or five unit and I want it to be a specialized house. So I'm saying that out of all the real estate plays, I'm not in billboards because I don't understand the billboard game mm. in real estate. I'm not in, uh, you know, massive apartment complex ventures. Uh, I'm in some syndicate deals that happen to be massive apartment complexes, but I'm not managing it directly. And then, you know, I'm, I'm saying that I have a subset of real estate that I have invested um, uh, learning about and uh, own. Now, on other asset classes like cryptocurrency specifically, uh, there are principles that I definitely have to have. Yeah. And part is, does it have an admin key? Does it have, uh, is it immutable? It's your square box that you were talking right, about. Right. You know, is this founder and this community public? Uh, means a lot to me. Yeah. Like, it's a huge selling point to me. Are they engaged? You know, even if it's outrage or some dramatic times and things like that, are they engaged with each other? Right? Like, right. like is there conversation? So, uh, I'm not really involved with any other products because I haven't seen other things. But I haven't honestly, truthfully, been searching for other things. Got it. I, I, I feel like I'm a a good representative of the hex community in general. You, def you are. You definitely are. And thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I've got Richard's trust, uh, you know, we, we talk all the time and such. So I really don't want to betray that by changing my principles of investing. Oh, that's be I mean, Hey, yeah, everyone invests, everyone does what they need to do, what they want to do. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I do support other things that tend to be built on top of hex. Like I do support Hedron. I do support, uh, the ideas behind it. I do like, uh, the founders of, uh, Maximus Dow and, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of Shout stuff. The gold key. Yeah, so guy. if they're based and they actually have some kind of synergistic use without a vampiric, a vampire kind of um, coin, right. then uh, I'll tend to support it. But you know, number one is I, I like the narrative of store of value, yield generation, uh, you know, T shares and all that kind of uh, yeah. gamification of uh, incentivizing people. Um, yeah. I don't want to, I, there's, there's certain things that like they're about high transactions and frequent uh, engagement and things like that with your asset class. I, I tend to like things that I just check on ever so often and Hex is that uh, for me. Got it. So, uh, <laughs> Hex Bear says, "Funding Jim is a genius." <laughs> I'm not a genius. <laughs> no, they're, they're calling you a genius because I mean, you you are. Uh, I mean, you, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I'm socially calibrated, and uh, I might be smart, but that's uh, I, I think it's overkill to say I'm a genius. <laughs> All right, so let me take you down a step. <laughs> okay, so Hex Down Under says, "If I send a super chat, will yeah. Funding Jim take off his shirt? I'm asking for a mate." <laughs> You want to see some flash? I was. I'll do anything for uh, for you. I mean, I'm just the shirt stays on, but I'll take off the leisure suit, Larry, uh, top here. You, you send, send your super send, chat, send super chat, man. Send super chat if you commit. want that and stuff, man. I'm not going to commit unless it's a uh, <laughs> dollar on the table. Oh, that's so funny. He could, but he have no money. He's a good dude. That's all that matters. <laughs> that's funny. But oh, yeah. um, no, shout out to Franklin. You guys are both great assets to the Hex community. No, thank you so much. But we, we also are trying to be great assets. I mean, good humans as well mm. and stuff and just trying to be good people and stuff. And then, I mean, uh, I mean, well, I if, would, you're, if you're going to build yeah. a community, who do you want as your neighbor? Right. Do you want someone that's going to stab you in the back? Do you want someone that's got your back? Like, who, who do you want in your community, right? right? And I don't like to have the hard borders of it's an us versus them world. I don't like that. I, I prefer to say, let's build a bunch of bridges. Let's be Johnny Appleseed and kind of leave ideas in people's uh, backyard. And if they want to have a community and, and embrace ours, then, you know, welcome with open arms. Right. So anime red pill with the two dollar super chat. The two dollar for the jacket. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm calling your bluff. He doesn't have any music, uh, something like that to go with. He wants to see, he wants to see a little oh, bit man. of uh, Las Vegas. Wow, thunder down under is what's going on. Right Las now. Vegas uh, earthquake <laughs> here I got going on. I got an earthquake shirt on, you know. It does what it does. There you go. Hurrah! Got the got the colors. And with that, you guys, where can people find you? Uh, well, it, my trade name is Funding Gem, and that has an origin story from my Accelerator world. Right. So uh, if you spell it correctly, make sure there's no L in Funding Gem. Yeah. There's no uh, four or five Gs or something strange, but spell it the way that it's on screen, 
and you'll find me. You just put it in Google, and uh, I'm on every platform. Yeah. I'm also Gary Woods. I'm, I'm very open about who I am. Uh, before 2017 and crypto came into my life, yeah. I was always a name. You know, I was a military guy with a uniform, and the uniform had my name. In medicine, when I was in cardiology, I had a name with a bunch of letters after it. And I was always Gary Woods. Only inside this crypto game have we been, have I been an avatar or some kind of uh, pseudonym. So you can find me uh, on Twitter. I'm Gary Woods Win on Funding Jim, uh, also Twitter. Same same thing. You'll find me. Uh, LinkedIn. I'm public. Yeah. You know. So and I even if you look at my Twitter handle, I try to be. You know, I understand some of the risk vectors of being public, especially in the crypto field. Right, right. You know, as far as the asset class or as far as like what people hold and things like that. But I did put on uh, Twitter, uh, Gary Woods Win Twitter, uh, that I had staked. I had bought market bought Hex a few months ago when it was like four cents or something. Yeah. And I had put uh, $10,000 for one year, $10,000 for two years, and $10,000 for three years uh, from a wallet. Mm -hmm. And that staked. And then in addition, there's 20000 that sits there waiting for when Pulse Chain goes live. And 10,000 will buy um, uh, Pulse Chain, the L1 token yep. or the L1 coin. The L1 coin, yeah. And then 10,000 will market by the DAX once the bridge is available. The, the Pulse X token? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So once, once there is an ability to move money from Ethereum into the Pulse Chain network, then that's my plan. Right. And uh, I'm public about it. I'm going to use it as marketing. Um, also, that's a great idea. Yeah, and again, it's, people need to have their own consideration of their own risk vectors if they're going to follow suit. Um, so decide on your own if you are going to be something that's a public wallet or known as a public wallet. Right. But, but though, because they're locked up and they're under stake, then when I talk to people that are outside of crypto, and they're especially when they're in real estate and they're a little bit hesitant uh, about participating in crypto, there's a statement that they can see. There's a public transaction they can see. And they can see that I'm vested in the same brand that I'm espousing. So... Um, look me up on Twitter, Gary Woods Win, and look at me up on uh, Instagram or YouTube or website as Funding Jim. Perfect. And I completely forgot to say this to you guys. We are going to the Hex fight October 15th. Oh, yeah. yeah I can, I, how the hell Almost fuck? get to the end of the conversation. Two and a half hours. Two, hours. two hours and 41 minutes of live stream. <laughs> and we don't talk about the, the Hex this fight. This is going to be awesome. M to the K Christ. show. M to the K show and uh, fake Drake and... Uh, going to be in uh, Atlantic City. Atlantic City at the showboat. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't done a uh, boxing match in person since I was a kid. I went to an event when I was a kid, but that's the last one. And this is going to be entertaining because it's a comedian of yeah. uh, M to the K, you know, yeah. versus, versus a rapper, versus, versus a, a, rapper. A, a virtual rapper, Vir a pseudo rapper. All right. All jokes aside, I've, I've actually hung out with like fake Drake for a bit. I've heard some of his music. Yeah. It's not, he's got, he's got a couple hits. He's got a hit. Huh? He's got a couple hits, man. Like, I was like, it doesn't sound like, you know, you hear somebody like, yeah, bro, that's cool. You're like, shit. Well, the thing that Into the K was pulling and calling him out on was saying, is he actually on Drake's album? Right. So, who knows? <laughs> I, okay, I haven't heard that. When song that yet. drops, when he kept that... saying, when it drops, I'm on, the, I'm on the track. I'm on the track and stuff. Yeah. So, there's a lot of, I don't want to say because he told me some of the background on it. And as I know, like, I, he, I mean, he trusted enough to tell me I'm not going to say it. Yeah, of course, but, of course, of course. But, I think there's some drama there. I, I kind of believe some of the story he's telling me because he sh they showed me a couple of receipts and I'm like, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So it's like, it isn't complete. Like the, the truth is stranger than fiction, right? Okay. And it's, see, it, there's an inception here. So let me tell you this. What's, so when M to the K goes on in the ring, it's going to be accompanied by a bunch of hexagons. We're going to be on the, in the ring and stuff with all the guys and stuff during yeah. the fight. The, the, if I remember correctly, the pay-per-view for the fight's only $10. Yeah. Super affordable, MK, MK, and all this guys. You know, shout out to Kareem and stuff. Everyone pretty much was like, let's try to make this as affordable as, as possible yeah. for everyone to do it. Um, and so it's being in Atlantic City. So it's literally, if you want to support and watch the fights, ten dollars. That's it. If you want to come to the fight, the t there's still tickets available right now. You can go to M to the K's website, and I'll also I'll put it in the description box below. Uh, once I get once I get done with this video, I'll, I'll add it to the description box, and you can get your tickets there. And you can come in person. If you do get your tickets there, we can actually try to adjust your seats. You sit in the same place that we are. Oh, that'd be we're, cool. Yeah, we're all gonna sit front row, hex shirted out and stuff. It's I gonna be it. it's gonna be a I'm great. All, I'm hexed up, baby. That's hexed, what he likes to say. That's right. We're all hexed up and everything like that. It's gonna be a great sort of thing. And then on top of that, um, Big Drake when he walks to the ring, from what I've heard, he's walking with the attack of the clones. He's he's actually <laughs> walking with every fake impersonator person 
into the ring. So it's like, it's just a fake Ja Rule. It's a fake 50 Cent. It's just a fake Dre. <laughs> all the, like, it's Attack of the Clones. That shit made me laugh. Like, That's he's like, kind of funny. He's I like, like it. Attack of the Clones and stuff. So it's yeah. it's kind of crazy. And supposedly they're going to be on Fresh and Fit in a, in a day or so, actually, as well and stuff. So nice. they're they're in Miami right now partying it up with Kareem and stuff, hitting Mr. Jones is up and doing everything, going uh, to the booty trap and yeah. stuff, you know, doing, doing all the rounds. But, you know, the donation, the donation's still there. I think right now, um, I think they're maybe like I think they're like four or five thousand dollars short, and they're that's it. Okay, like that's it. So it's yeah, like I covered some of that. Yeah, yeah, no, you definitely have. Thank you for that and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of prominent hexagons that have like donated money for the fight, and they're all um, anyone who donated for the fight and stuff. The the top ten donators are all getting are all going to the fight and stuff. Going to be ringside and stuff. Yeah. So, so there's gonna be a lot of hexagons that you've seen that's gonna be at the pay per view, and we're gonna be the hex section and yeah. the shirts and stuff. So I think Hex cool. Monkey is gonna be there too. Yeah, I, Hex I, Monkey. I like yeah. So Hex Monkey saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say that every time because I had uh, this Vegas meetup or whatever. And yeah, yeah. I, I got the coof. When I got the coof, he saved yeah. me. He saved me from a uh, uh, misery. Right. <laughs> So with that, you guys, go check that out. Um, and go in the description box, sign up to the Citadel. Crypto Mindset is coming out November 18th. It's going on sale, you guys. So nice. just remember that quarter four is coming out. Yep. And my next stream will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yep. Mystery and, and, and that's the thing is, you know, this is the market. This is where people make their wealth. Right. They make their wealth in the bear. They don't make it in the, you know, they, they, they do they deleverage do de and they do exit, you know, tops, yeah. hopefully, to actually realize gains. But this is where you really get your value is in the purchasing of, uh, you know, bear value, bear right. cost. Right. You want to have bear cost and you want to have uh, uh, bull value. Right. You know? anyway. So, anyway, Travis, take us out, man. Thank you guys so much. See you.